Ladies love the skin. Ow. Bring it a little bit closer. The good skin that is. <laughs> That's why having a proper skincare routine is very important and you need to fill the teach. The process is so easy, just four steps. You got your daily face wash. That's gonna clean your face up nice and right. You got your exfoliator scrub. That's gonna open up your pores. You got your AM moisturizer with the SPM 20, which is gonna protect you from the sun. You also got your PM moisturizer, which is gonna make sure your skin is protected throughout the night. Tej has tons of reviews from dedicated customers across the world. I know I said a lot, but it's okay, because guess what? It comes with an instruction card to explain to you in detail what to do morning and night. And because Tej is a sponsor, they're offering my family 30% off along with a free gift. Just click that link that's in the description and fill the Tej. Icebreaker. Are people settling with their relationship or is it making an intelligent decision? Go ahead and play this clip. A lot of people get married to people that they do not love because what ends up happening is that you make a rational decision. It's like a business decision. You mm -hmm. look at a person and you say, okay, she's going to be a good mother to my children. She cooks, she cleans, she's not super mixy. Am I madly in love with her? No, I'm yeah. not. And the same for, for women. I think women, they'll marry a man like, okay, he's a good provider. He has a solid job. And that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, right? How do you feel about that business decision when it comes to a relationship of making a rational decision at, as opposed to making a decision based on love and romance? I mean, I think too many people in many areas of their lives settle for what they don't want because they are not comfortable enough to be fearless to go after what they re really want and just is it, is, is, it settling? is it settling or is it making an intelligent decision the men who ended up settling they end up chasing who they really love or desire out in the streets when i ask a guy yo you married you happily married and he like i mean yeah you know wife amazing she do homework with the kids and she supported me when I was a bum ass dude, and now I got some money, and I'm still a bum ass dude, but I just act like I'm not one, and I just cover the bills to just keep her there, but don't do nothing extra. And then they're tricking off on a girl who got the OnlyFans or work. All right, I'm going to play one more time for Sweeney. Sweeney, you there? Sweeney? Mic check, Sweeney? No, nah, you ain't got to play it again. I heard that shit. Okay, you got it? I see you heard that shit. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Are people settling with their relationships or is it making an intelligent decision? I'm going to go ahead and start with you first, Luis. What are your thoughts about that, sir? I think it might be a, a, a bit of a combination of the both. I mean, I think there are some people are settling and there are some people who are making very calculated decisions about who they want to, to be the mother of their children. And the women are, you know, making a calculated decision that time of who would be the best provider and the best role model for their sons. Um, I think far too often there are people who are not thinking of any of that. They're not, you know what I'm saying? They're just in the mix and living life and oops, you know, we have a child on the way and these things are happening. You know, um, I think now with more and more conversations, I think people are kind of moving a little bit more carefully about the people that they're selecting. Um, there was something that the brother had brought up and it really, really caught my attention, right? And he talked about the brother that is married, but he's tricking off on the OnlyFans girl, right? I think for dudes, it's okay to kind of, you know, 
not get everything you want, right? I think the closest that you could get, because I think, you know, men do date down, but I think that if you got a chick that is an amazing woman, who is an amazing woman to your children, and she shows up in every possible way as a wife and stuff like that, I think that the, the excitement component of doing things, going out, you know, having adventure traveling and stuff like that. I don't think that that romance and that capability has to die. I think that people need to kind of find those moments that where they can have spark in the connection. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that the romance needs to be thrown out, but I do think that you need to be intelligent and calculated about who you should have that romance with and do they have all those intangibles. I don't think that we should, you know, uh, align ourselves with one extreme or the other. I think there is a balance in between where you can have you can have it all, you know what I'm saying, in a balanced manner. Um, but I think some people are just not qualifying themselves for the people that they want. You know what I'm saying? They're just not putting themselves in the position or they're not the person that they will qualify for who they want, you know? So that's all I got. All right. Go ahead, Trey. Let's move. Cool, cool. So, um, Lewis, I definitely like the fact that you mentioned the word balance, right? Uh, that's a really good thing. But um, I say, does it always work out that way? And as far as men, you know, dating down, um, we say it a lot that men date down. But in all honesty, I think we're dating with who we align with, who we actually qualify for, because if you could do better, you probably would. Right. So even though a female might not be at the same social status, there's different categories. Right. But you actually are picking something that, you know, is sustainable for you right and we do we play it safe but that's that's what it is we know that this particular woman is or at least we think that she's gonna ride with us right now as far as picking women i think it's very important to focus on compatibility right me personally i would say all right like some of the things he mentioned is she going to be a good mother to my children right um do we align do we are we of the same faith i think that's important um does she handle money the way that i handle money right that's those are the things that you you need to be looking into uh it's great if you can love somebody but you can't chase that as like your primary focus it's great if you have that that's a bonus but love that that's that's fickle man females can switch up on you in a minute so you're better off at least looking in the direction of how compatible we are, right? How do we have the same lifestyle? Do we have the same eating habits? Does she work out like I hit the gym? That type of thing. So just try to find somebody who aligns with your beliefs and just your way of life, right? And hopefully you will love them. I, I think that you can love can grow and likely if you do a lot of the same things, you have similar interest, then uh, it's a lot easier to love that person. But if you are chasing love primarily then that's going to be settling because you'll be miserable once you find out that nothing is functional you're, if your relationship really isn't functional then you're going to have a lot more problems and that love right and, and how i feel about women in their love right it all depends on how they feel about you so let's say they loved you at a level eight once that you start doing things that they don't really like they're going to hate you that same thing so that love and hate is pretty much the same feeling inverted how whatever amount of passion she had for you is what she's going to have for you when you start to do things she doesn't like. I'll leave it there for now. All right, go ahead, Mr. Cloud Jones. Um, hmm. I would say um sometimes what would be considering what, what would be considered settling might be um the the intelligent decision to make. You know, like a lot of times what's exciting to you and you know what might make you feel really enthusiastic and exciting in the long run isn't good for you like like for example like candy or dessert might get people excited a lot of people more more excited about dessert than they are about dinner but you know dinner is what you know breakfast lunch and dinner that's what keeps you alive that's what sustains your body it's not the, the treat at the end so um i think once you get to a certain point in life you gotta decide if you want to chase what makes you excited or chase what actually you're compatible with and what enriches you and and what causes actual harmony in your life and sometimes what causes harmony in your life might not look like, you know, that thing that gets your desire stirring up. And, and, and that goes for both men and women, you know, but for, same thing for a woman, like the guy that might be the best partner for her might not be the guy that 
might get her as excited as, you know, maybe a, a certain famous person or a celebrity or whatever the case is. So, yeah, sometimes settling is the um, most intelligent decision. You know, you got to be be picky about what it is you want. But I think it's more important to focus on, like Trev said, the compatibility um, than anything else. All right. Go to Bruiser, then I'll go to Sweeney. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't think settling is a good idea. I mean, I think people who settle don't know their own potential. I think when I say that, that means you don't know whether you're on a upward project uh, trajectory. If you look at a, a graph of where your progress is, when we talk about leveling up as a man, you got a lot of men out here today that's choosing women whenever they're not completely accomplished or they haven't established themselves or where they want to be or where they even think or believe they can be at in life as a man. So I think it's, uh, j- having good judgment of where you want to be and where you can actually get to when we talk about socioeconomic status. But you picking a girl whenever you are an average, you earning an average income, but you you have a uh, a drive, you have a work ethic that can project you towards a higher level. And then you know, being aware, having some, some being cognizant and being aware of the plethora of women that you'll be exposed to, the options that you'll be uh, able to get, able to choose from whenever you get to that level. You know, being aware of that will allow you to not settle. You get what I'm saying? So, for example, if if I'm working at freaking Home Depot, I'm working my ass off, and then I got a second job working at a gas station or whatever, uh, I'm, I'm making about maybe 40 grand a year as a 25-year-old, but I, I'm on pace to when I get to 35, 40, to be making about 90 to 100,000 a year or better, I'm not going to be so quick to settle for the type of girl that I can attract, the type of girl that I can get at that level. You know, and there's other things that come into effect other than just, the, you know, your, pay, your, your paycheck or the level of salary. But it's just being aware of where you can get at, where, you, where, you, where are you going at, you know, as a man and where you, where you, how you can level up and choosing wisely. Because I mean, if you, if you want to be honest, man, if we was all to be honest on this panel, we know that depending on our stat, our socioeconomic status, we're going to be exposed to a totally different group of women. It may be a better group of women than we would if we was just an average earner. I mean, that's just given. I I think we can all honestly agree to that. And if you're willing to be patient and wait and just grind and do the work, then you can get that. But I think a lot of us just, you know, we want to get some pussy. (laughs) So, like, you know, I want my cake now, and then whenever I'm done, I'll push her off to the side, and then I'll go get what I'm worth now. And that's when we become a part of the problem that we – talk about on a day-to-day basis in the space about how women are three or foes and you end up being single mothers. That's how you can see yourself becoming part of the issue or creating the issue that we constantly talk about. We as men got to be aware and be honest and be, you know, choose wisely and not settle. Now I'll just leave it at that uh, for right now, get everybody time to talk. All right. Go ahead, brother Swinney. Oh, I often find myself asking this question, who exactly are we speaking for or speaking about? I think when you're talking about an elite class of people, yeah, I think they are far more uh, intuitive about the way they plan their lives out regarding who they date and everything or who they marry. But for your regular average everyday person, they all marry who they love. It always starts with love. Now, granted, or you know what I mean? It may have started with love and then an oops baby, and then they decide to get married, whatever. However, you want to draw it out. I think a lot of people start with who they love. And that's where it goes. Now, him talking about um, then you find out later on, oh, you want to deal with the side, you want to go after the person that you that you really are attracted to. Well, you could still, why didn't you get that person when you wanted to? No, you married who you wanted to marry, and then you fuck who you wanted to fuck. If that's how you want to look at it. Because you can always, if, if that girl is who you really want to be with, why don't you divorce your, your wife and go after the, the other chick? Unless you find something valuable about your wife, and you just want to fuck the new chick. 
So no, I think I think most regular people operate out of love. And because we operate out of love and then we lose the duty aspect of it or do we we lose the understanding of what those vows mean that we make decisions after the fact that can affect our marriages and we make decisions that don't necessarily align with what we're supposed to be doing. So we'll be like, oh, well, I don't like I don't like this person today or I may not love this person today. And you forget what you in it for. And that's how you wind up with a lot of divorces and, and um, unhappy marriages. It's not because the person didn't change all that much. The person's still the same person you got with. They may have had some subtle differences and things like that, but you know about what you know how that person handles a lot of different shit. It's just now you tired of it. You see something new and you're like, oh, well, I want to go with this. But eh, that's about it. All right, go ahead, Marcus. So, all right, so my, my general philosophy was if I didn't meet you, pri- like when I would, I'm, I'm going to use the, the, the time when I thought I was going to the league, right? If I didn't meet you before I got to the NBA, it was impossible for me to take that relationship serious. Um, because I would have seen it as a situation where no matter how much she may or may not have loved me, that it would have been a use or a situation. And I know that fluctuates with status or money and all those things, which can flee, can flee. Right. So based off of that, I would not have been in the actual relationship in the league. Um, if I, if I couldn't walk up to you and talk to you and get you to go without having to show you that I got X, Y, Z, or I'm doing X, Y, Z, then I would not consider having a long-term relationship with you. That's that's just how I uh how I pick my metrics based off of what I what I think longevity looks like and the ideal family setup that I would like to have. Um, but I, I think it's true though, the the different levels you climb, the different beauty standards of women that you'll meet and have access to. The question is, are they internally as attractive? And a lot of times that's not true. All right. Oh no, Kenny, welcome to the show, brother. Uh, you need to play the video or you good? I'm good. I was watching in the back. Uh, oh. Even everybody on the panel. Well, um, I'm when you take your lumps, like going through life and figuring out what you want, I think once you get in a relationship, a lot of them, in my opinion, you find your footing later on in life and then you realize that maybe this is not the right girl for me. Like, you know, during the stages of you going from adolescent to teen to manhood, you're figuring out what works for you. That also goes for relationships. So when we see these relationships that people go their separate ways, and then you ask her why, oh, you know, I got tired of her, he got tired of me. I don't think that was it. I think two parties finally realized that this person wasn't in tune to what they were, what what their goal was to have that type of person in their life. And then, you know, you hear the occurrences of the affairs and them stepping out. Someone is finally being honest with themselves and saying, you know what, I'm in this relationship and across the street is, that's what I want. That's what suits me better. But you're so heavily invested at that point in time, then it looks like a, a whole cluster. You know what? When I see certain relationships like that. So speaking of that, like when you take vows, are you really being honest with yourself? And then down the road, you find out that's not the thing for you, but you're staying in it. But then again, you're going against yourself and then you grow resentment. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe this doesn't work for me. Then the argument starts, the space. Then you're losing yourself within something that you, an illusion of what you thought was a, a forever relationship. I land my plane there. We, we really are making a horrible case for marriage right now. <laughs> but, but, but see, this is a horrible see. case for marriage, man. Like, but, but, but the title speaks for it all. Are people settling or are they making intelligent decisions about relationships? 
You know what I'm saying? It it has it says nothing about marriage. So, so if people are not able to properly sit with themselves and say, look, these are my non-negotiables and these are the things that I value in a partner or where I see a part, you know what I'm saying, my future partner to head into, right? And sort of if you're talking to these women and you get to a point where I don't see a, a, a long-term relationship with you, you know what I'm saying? I can see this, us having fun or this being a short thing, or I could see you being, you know, my forever person or the mother to, to, of my children, us building a life together. All right, then. Then you're understanding that this person has certain intrinsic values about them that catches you, that you could travel with, that you can have fun, that you can build and grow with and have a family with. If those things are not on those barometer, let that person go, because all you're going to end up doing is getting that person pregnant. There's going to be regrets and all this and that. And now we just created a, the ongoing cycle that we tend to talk about a lot. Right. So what if you get married to that person that and you come to realization later? Well, then they did a horrible. Then they made a, a non-intelligent decision. Like, what were the criteria to vet to, you know, vet out that person? You know what I'm saying? Did, are they even marriage minded? What, what what is their upbringing? You know what I'm saying? What's their relationships with their father? You know what I'm saying? All these things that make you give you insight to be like, okay, I, like I could, we could start courting this person to kind of usher and move in the direction of potential marriage, right? But I don't really think that people have a specific, you know, uh, vision of what that looks like. I think, so, I think, I, I think, think, I think with men and women. I think it's two different things. Sure, I mean, we talk about we talking about people, but with a mic I really think you got to divide it between men and women. I got you. I got you. Thank you. No, what I was saying is, I, I think I, I get the question is about do people, but I think you can't just really like gauge the question from a people standpoint. You really got to because it's different for men and women. I think I think the most dangerous thing a man can have is being aware that at an early age that his uh, being aware of his mate value in the data market at an early age, I would say a combination of age and trial and error makes most men aware that, Hey, depending on my resource and, and what I'm able to bring to the table uh, can put me in a position to get what I want. Give me leverage. I don't think a lot of I don't I think if you go to your local gym and you go play basketball with a bunch of 20 year olds and 18, 19 year olds, you guys don't know anything about leverage. They just see somebody who's pretty and fine and they willing to go and wipe them up if they're given a chance. But I don't believe those guys are being mentally equipped with the, the awareness of, hey, look, if I really level myself up and I really grind and work hard, I can have my pick of the litter. And I think all of that comes with a little bit of aging and a little bit of trial and error. I get it when you get married, you know, there's supposed to be some discipline. I think there's supposed to be some sense of accepting, you know, we accepting, okay, we got a woman and we accepting her flaws or, you know, uh, a lack of attraction or a lack of things here and there that and the next woman that we might be, me that might be more appealing here and there might have. Uh, that's, that's got something to do with upbringing. But when you look at it from a woman's standpoint, it's just similar to the same thing. A lot of these women aren't aware as at a young age that, hey, look, based on my youth, you know, I'm in my window of where I've got, I can be choosy. You know, I can be picky versus 35, 40 years old. And I think it's an awareness thing. It's a timing. It's a timing thing. Being aware that, hey, look, if I really work on myself and optimize myself, I can get the person I want and I won't have to necessarily settle. And that actually, you know, bakes into the making an intelligent decision, but you can't make an intelligent decision. If you don't, if you're not educated, how, how is it settling? If you chose her, what do you mean? How does it selling? If you chosen, think about it. We men, we as men have to do this. We have to approach, talk to ask out on a date. Like you literally every part of, that woman you chose her, how would it then be settling? Not necessarily every part, bro. It, it could be settling if you don't get the woman you attracted to, actually, and you deal with what you can get. So but, you would be settling by doing that. Sweeney, answer this question. 
if you were if you if you were a multimillionaire, would you still have the same woman? Yes. Pri- no, listen. Okay, let me rephrase that. Prior to selecting her, if you were a multi-millionaire prior to selecting a woman that you already got, would that be the woman that you would be with today? Well, fucking no. I was yes, you do. That's the, and this is what King Talk is for. We supposed to know shit like that. Because it don't make sense because I'm not going to be a multi-millionaire. It, it ain't about it making sense. It's just about reality. But I'm no, not a multi-millionaire. But if I was a multi-millionaire, my whole select, my whole bit. You ever played fucking uh, Madden where they had the vision, the quarterback vision? It's not about making sense. My it's whole about vision reality. was literally I just break it to, to the main topic right now. Hey, but, Phil, but, let, me, like, let me get in there for y'all. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Yeah, let me have some of this, man. God damn. Uh, look here. The, 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 we making the word settle like it's a bad thing. You realize every motherfucker's in a relationship y'all settling. Whether you want to feel like that or not. Now, you, you it, it can be at the same time you make an intelligent decision. Because you realize you you may not can afford the certain women that you can afford. You can't maintain them. You can't maintain a lifestyle. You can't maintain a, a sex drive. Whatever reason, <laughs> some guys, it's just, it's just like that. So y'all sit there and make it upset, like a bad, uh, settle is a bad thing. Now some of y'all have to settle. Some of y'all have kicked y'all coverage. Y'all got lucky the motherfucker to get that woman. <laughs> some of y'all are ugly than a motherfucker out here, and y'all don't deserve a nice looking woman. But you, you know, you came up because you had you had a hell of a mouthpiece. You had some good game, or you was you was tricking right that night. Whatever your reasons why you got that woman, you got her. Let me but ask look, you this, Hank. Would you would you want to be the man that a woman says settle? She settled for Let you. Me Let me finish. Uh, as far as uh, uh, is it an intelligent decision? Yeah, eventually you're gonna you, you should at least settle down with one woman, and and, and and if that's what you believe in the monogamy and all that stuff, if that's what you believe, you should settle down for the for, for the right woman that that you feel like you made the best decision on, that you vetted her well, that you made the decision on. You separate her from all these other ones out here. And you 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 settle on one woman that you deem that you gonna bless with your last name. I don't see nothing wrong with that if you pick the right woman. Now, if you don't pick the right woman, well, then that's a different that's a different situation. Maybe you're not as intelligent you think you are, and you made a bad decision. But go ahead, Bruce, with your question. No, what I was saying was you said settling is not a bad thing. I beg to differ. Settling means that you. I think I think we first gotta understand. I think we first gotta have an un. Um, a group understanding what settling actually is. Me personally, and y'all can disagree. Settling to me is like, okay, look, she's not my first choice, but I'll take that. And it, 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 might, not be, it might not be bad for you, but I guarantee you, if you went and, to, and walked in the next room and said, "Hey, woman, I, I'll settle for you," it wouldn't sit right with her. It wouldn't sit right with me if my wife told me I wasn't her first choice. How can you say that if you know that's going to be offensive to her? It's not about knowing whether it's going to be offensive to her. It's about just understanding how people feel about being second, uh, second choice. You ain't necessarily got to go. Is, I'm not telling you to go and test it out. I'm just saying, settling is a bad I, thing, bro. But you wasn't their first choice. Of men, you wasn't. Ninety percent of men, you, you are not the first choice. You not the first so choice. She met a What your wife that told you you were my first choice? You was in my high third. school. In high school, when she was in love with that little high school sweetheart she was dating, she wasn't thinking of you, nigga. She wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in love okay, with this so, nigga. Okay, so, no, okay, you was, so you see, was not I the first choice. Doing. I see what y'all doing. Y'all being very disingenuous, especially on behalf of math. Y'all thinking chronologically, chronolo- no, chronologically no, 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 the time. Because that's what it is. How, how can, sh- how can I even be a choice? Is. Hold on. How can I even be a choice if I never even existed on a chronological time frame? You can't sit here and use that. That's loaded. That's very loaded saying that she went to high right. school. She, I never existed. All right, let, let, in order let me to give you another scenario. Her. Let me give you another what, scenario. What I'm your, saying your is poster, your me. poster was never on her wall. Ever. Ever. In you your still, life. You still, you I still don't make a step, bro. Your poster was never on her wall. You wasn't okay, so choice. so so clearly we don't have clearly we don't have a, a a group a mutual understanding of what settling is. When okay, so let me just explain what I think settling is. <laughs> What I think settling is, it's looking at your body of or your current body of work and what you can you can bring to the table, what you can offer in a relationship and looking at what you can get in return, uh, almost like a return on your investment. 
And this has got nothing to do with chronological uh, who came first or whatever. It's, hey, look, I, I have this much to offer. This is the maximum of what I can get. And this is what I'm going to go for. Instead of going for the maximum of what you can get or what's available to you, you say, you know what? Fuck that. This guy's OK. I'll just deal with him. What That's what I mean by selling. <laughs> Everybody gets the maximum of what they can get. They might think that's not their maximum. Oh, but that's their maximum. I mean, but you got to also think, unless you're the perfect man, you're going to fall short on, on some aspect of the situation. You're not going to be perfect. You got the, the worst personality to her. But, you know, you got money, you provide, you, you got good sex or whatever the case or you look decent. But your personality, <laughs> she, she deemed you good enough to get with. Let, let, no, let's keep, it, let's keep it straight from the male's perspective. Like, let's keep it straight on men because we... We could talk about women settling all day, but let's talk about straight up. How the fuck does a man settle when you picked her? When you I kind of, all right, still answer that. Best you can get at that moment. It doesn't matter how you leveled up. You got the best that you could get in the moment in which you got it. That doesn't even make sense how you phrase it. You ask that how does a man settle, and then you turn around and say, you got the best you can get. Those two don't even make any sense together. So if the best you can get, you got the best you can get. Okay, okay, Swinney, do we both agree that the best that you can get if you choose that person, can we agree that you did not settle? No, you did not settle if you got the best you can get. So Okay, so now let me ask the second question. The best you can get you didn't go and get that. You went and got the second best you can get. Did you settle? Who does that? Uh, people do that shit all the time. Jalen Green did that. All right, hold on, hold on. Green is doing Jaylen that right Jaylen now. Look at Jalen Green right now. Hey, I'm going to say, Jaylen I'm going to say, 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 I'm going because niggas don't don't seem to know what the word settle means. So I'm going to read the definition so, so we can have a, a real discussion here on what the word uh, settle means. And one of the most prominent definitions of the word settle is, is it says to adopt a more steady or secure style of life, especially in a permanent job and home. So I don't know what version of settle y'all talk about. But when we're talking about settling well, down, we're talking about finding a secure partner. Not going after what right, excites listen. you and what and what what comes with all that fun and energy. We're talking about secure relationship. That's what we're talking about. If we're talking about now, what, what is the author of the question? If we're talking question. about first pick and second pick and best pick, the reality is you're always going to get your best pick because if you had a better pick, you would pick it. You would pick no, it. But you would nah, pick it. If, if, no, if that's you had, not that's you had really two, true. Now you know. Bruiser, I'll tell bruiser, you what the problem is with that. In front of you, if you have two options that are viable in front of you, two go you got a gorgeous woman that loves you. And you got an ugly woman no, that loves you. Both of them love you the same. Nobody chooses the ugly woman that loves them over the gorgeous That's not woman. necessarily true. Oh, come on, man. No. If they, so if look, both of the women the reason, care the reason about why, them to the same level, look, the same quality, you're going to pick whatever the better option is every time. Everybody picks their best option. What are we even talking so about? So when here? the dude in the video, there was a dude in the, the dude in the video, when he used the word settling, he used it in that way that Bruce is discussing right now because he was asking the question of women are settling. So I understand what you're saying as far as the denotation of it, which makes sense. But the dude in the video, how he referred to it, he was saying, are we setting? Like, are we absolutely going for our best possible choice? And sometimes our opinions change, right? We have, we, we think the the best but we actually chose for the wrong that could be a way that you're settling because he's saying that now so he was talking about 304s which you really love which i think is bogus but sometimes we choose things that for a reason that we probably shouldn't have right it might have been the wrong reason maybe we went with this person because she seems stable or whatever but we wanted to love somebody so when a dude in the video was talking about it he was saying did we go because of what we thought we were supposed to do or did we get somebody who we actually loved that's, and so he's saying we were settling by not choosing the woman that we love versus going for the, with the woman who had these bullet points. I'm just going by the video. That, 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 that's like an uninformed the, the decision, question. though. That's like different. You know what I mean? That's a little different than settling. But When you say uninformed but decision, I'm just going by the video. Because, because from, from what Trev just said, he's saying like, okay, you you didn't know to pick better. Like you picked based off Thank of something you. that now you thought was the right decision. Said, the time. philosophy I said earlier be, by so being aware of your choices. But what I'm saying is if you're unaware of your choices, that's not settling. It's not you're settling. Still, 
you're still making the best perceivable choice to you in that moment. And I agree with you, and which is why I stated the danger, the most dangerous situation a man can be in is being aware of his ability to be able to choose what he wants based off of his socioeconomic status. And I think you used the term uninformed decision. I just used the term not being aware that you can go actually out there and do the work and grind and take a pause on dating. Take a pause on just jumping into damn relationships just because you your pecker getting hard or your heart getting warm and actually go and do the work and have your pick of the litter. All right, so let me ask you a question. That's what you that's what you call All right, so, so let me let, let, let me ask you a question to make sense of this, right? So if somebody if you get offered a job and the job says, We're gonna pay you two hundred grand right now, and, and and you you've never gotten paid two hundred grand for a job before, you're like, Oh shit, two hundred, I'm gonna take that. Then you get on the job and you find out that everybody else there is getting two fifty. Did you settle? No, you didn't settle. You took the best option that you had on the table. You didn't know what the other options are. Now, if you took the 200 knowing that 250 was on the table, yes, that would count as settling. But being unaware that the, the, the base salary for this job is 250 and accepting 200, that's not settling. That's not. There ain't, there ain't a man on this planet that doesn't know that money brings more. <laughs> not one man on this planet doesn't know that money brings more options. We all know that, hey, later on, I might be more attractive if I get more money. You know that you might get more looks, but you picked who you picked early on. But just like Marcus said, it also brings bad options. So they may be making an un unintelligent uh, decision for some bad options. There's one thing that you missed, Cloud. I get what you were saying, but you missed one important thing. There's a, there's a such thing. I, I agree. There's a such thing as what the job offers you, but you forgot what you qualify for, what your work experience and what your resume qualifies you for as far as a salary pay. Also, what your previous salary at the job you were before. You could have been making 200000 I'll, I'll just put it at that. And the job that you're trying to go and put, uh, get is 250000 And you actually got the work experience and qualifications to move up to a $300,000 salary. If you Bruiser. choose that two hundred thousand salary, are you gonna sit here and tell me that you settled, Bruiser? Real quick, how would a man? Get Shannon in there, y'all. We got to get Shannon. Strictly, a strictly relationship. How would a man not Bruiser, know? You would, you would have to. How would know a man Bruiser not know what? I, I, I want to hear this. Hold on, Cloud. How would a man not know what woman he can pull? How would a man not know? Yes. Not being able to understand the value in what he can offer a woman. It's a, would you agree that a lot of men don't understand the value of what they can offer a woman at a 100%. young age? And I, I specifically, come on, man. No. At a young age, out here working. I think a man knows a exactly what he's going out here yeah, working. Brother. And you get start. A lot of these guys do not understand the value they can offer. And, and not necessarily the value they can offer, the value they can get to, they can achieve to okay. be able to offer at a later stage you're, to get the woman about, they want. You're talking, about, you're talking about where they think they can go versus where they are right now. It's not now. about where you think oh, no, you can go. No, no, no. no. You're saying, because you're conflating two different things. I think most men know exactly where they are in the moment that they're in there. I think they know exactly what kind of woman they can get, exactly what kind of woman they can pull, exactly how what, what options they have. We yeah. are not done. Yeah, I agree with that. But the woman you want might not be in that threshold. The woman she, you want see, might be in a threshold saying, of you having to go and do some work. That may be fair, but that doesn't mean that you settle. You got what if you want. me if you if the woman you want is outside of the threshold that you're currently in, and you go and choose a woman at that threshold, you settle. But well, not I, necessarily I, I, because I, I you think, didn't bruiser, do the work. I think settling is the wrong word. Bruiser, bruiser. I get what you're saying, bruiser. I think you're saying that you missed your potential. I don't know if that's the same as settling, but I get what you're saying. A lot of men don't know what their true capability of, and so they don't know that they can attract what they want, right? So they might be like, yo, I really want that baddie from da da da, -da and they don't know they can really get it, so they settle for the, and, and it, the way you're looking at it is they're settling for the girl they get, right? Right. But in their mind, exactly. in their mind, they're not settling. You get what I'm saying? In their mind, they're like, oh, I just got something, like she's popping because he doesn't know he's a 300 grand nigga. He, he's coming off a 200 grand job. So he like, yo, a 250 sounds good to me. But, but what you're saying makes sense. Yeah, that, that, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let Shannon go. The whole thing is being aware and understanding and knowing in the dating market 
what do women want? What is in high demand? What do they want? Can you get there? It, are the women that want that person, are those the same women that you want? And if that and those things, those two things align, then what you do is you take a, you don't go out here and, and get there and just jump into a relationship. You go out here and you go grind and you go do the work and you get the woman that you want. So, all right, so, we got to go to Shan. We got to go to Shan, Cloud. We got to go to Shan. Go ahead, Shan. Brothers, heated for an uh, uh, icebreaker this morning. I mean, tonight. Is that a coming All in right. hot? Coming in hot. What up, Bruiser? Good to see you, bro. Are you are so are, are you rebranding? Are you you no longer Bruiser? You Darwin now? I mean, so what, what, y'all know me as Bruiser. Y'all can hold that. I, that's my nickname. I just I just like to use my name for the search algorithm for my for YouTube ah, channel so you, purposes. No, I'm gonna call you. I'm uh, we gonna if you getting rebrand if you rebranding. Yeah, just rebranding. call me Darwin. Yeah, call me Darwin. There we go. That's from cool. now on, appreciate I'm that. Appreciate that. Yeah. You're a Darwin, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Y'all are here arguing semantics, and I think we're we're misinterpreting some of the words. But I'm not about to jump into that argument. Y'all was going back and forth. Listen, are we are people settling with their relationships, or are they making an intelligent decision? Is the question Jr. asked. In my opinion, I think people are doing neither. Brothers, I don't think they're doing neither. I don't think people settle. We've talked about this before. I gave you guys a whole dissertation on it, I think, back then. So I'm not going to talk as long as I did. But people don't settle. You get, you are not settling. You get what you qualify for. Settling is when you know you can and have the ability to do better, yet you consciously decide not to. And nobody does that. Thank you. You got two. You got two employers, man. One is offering you seventy thousand dollars. The other one is offering you fifty thousand dollars. The commute to work is the same distance. It's the same amount of work. Same job you're doing. If you take the fifty thousand just because you settled, but if you know that they're one in the same, if if you can get the seventy grand doing the same work, you're gonna take the seventy grand. And that's the same thing when it comes to relationships. First choice has little to do with it, bro. It's based on what you qualify for. And, you know, he, the, the, the second part is, is it a, it's not even making an intelligent decision. And the, and the problem with that is men have, in the last 100 years, been going, getting married for love. I'm going to bring it back to the original thing. So let's get it off the, the whole settlement argument. You know, it's they're not settling and they're not going for love either. I wish now here's what I wish. I wish they were making an intelligent decision. I wish men were. Marriage is a duty. It's a contract. Listen, all the single men watching this show. Write yourself a contract before you get married. Marriage is a duty. In fact, the married men need to sit with their wives and rewrite their contract if you're interested in longevity. Trust me, twice married, twice divorced. Originally, marriage wasn't even about love. The original purpose of marriage was <laughs> men sort of owned a woman to guarantee that his children were biologically his. It had nothing to do with love. Love came at the turn of the last century when they learned that they could monetize it. And we all fell for it, men and women alike. And now diamonds are a woman's best friend. Marriage is regulated by laws. It's a civil status. Listen, if you guys can understand that there's certain contractual obligations that you have to have until death do you part and you treat your marriage like a corporation that you are entering with a partner to achieve a certain goal, you will succeed in marriage. Guaranteed. I was not taught that. I wish I was. If you go into marriage thinking that you guys are going to be a power couple, you're going to do some of that huxtable shit, you want to just fall in love and think y'all going to be loving each other all day, every day for the rest of your lives, you are in for a rude awakening. The moment that you realize that marriage is a duty, that you have a contract to her 
and she has a contract. I mean, you have you have a, a contractual obligation to her and she has a contractual obligation to you, a duty that she should fulfill and one that you should fulfill and that you guys work to make sure that you're doing your best to fulfill that every day until you die. You your marriage will last a lifetime. That's the intelligent part that a lot of people don't do. And I wish they did. And they certainly aren't settling because people take the best they can at the time that they're at. And that's all I got to say about that. All right. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> right again, two weeks in a row, bro. All right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Bruiser, a.k.a. Darwin. Now, I, I, get, I get what he's saying about the, the marriage thing. But my my whole point was on the selection process. And the reason why I say you settle, I mean, I'm I'm very clear on this. If you know that there's, I mean, every man know that there's work to be done. There's room for improvement. And when you're going out here in a relationship and you begin to date, we get mad and we we destroy women in these spaces for av- having the freaking audacity to step out and go and actually try their hand in the dating market, knowing there's room improvement. Shit, weight is one of them. We can say the same thing about men going out here and trying to date, knowing that they need to get their ass in the gym. And you going to get in a relationship. You know for a fact, if you really actually go put the work in and make the improvements, the people that you attract and the women, the options that you're going to be exposed to in the dating market, it's going to be, it's going to be different. That, that's my whole point. Now, when you talk about the, the marriage and, and how you're supposed to be in marriage and how you're supposed to, you know, honor it and, and all this other stuff and, and look at it as a duty, I agree with all that stuff, Shan. But we first got to get past that initial threshold, man. You got to, you actually got to go work on yourself. I tell look at young guys all the time that I talk to in the gym, bro. Don't get in no damn relationship. You're 23, bro. And you still got work to do. You got to go finish college. Then you got to go start a career. Now we got all these conversations about people outgrowing each other. And they didn't know that they can get to this. You are on pace for that. So just wait, take your time. But if you already com- com- compl- I don't know what's complacent. You content with where you want to be at, then yeah, go ahead and choose you a woman. Go ahead and choose you a mate. But if you are on the grind, bro, it's best to just chill and sit back and watch your fruit grow. And then whenever it's time to go out here and choose a mate, you'll know that you're getting the bang for your buck. That's all I got to say. Do you think men who make it to that level have an easy time choosing women? Hell yeah. No. Not, not to sleep with for the, for the real reason, for marriage. Do you think they have an easy time selecting a mate when they've already arrived? you damn right. No. When, they level, when a man levels up to his potential? Do, are you saying when Can a man levels up? Wife or is it easy to pick a wife? Is it easy to pick a wife when you got your pick of the litter? When, you when you've done all the work and, ma- and max stop maximize your potential? Yep. Is it damn easy right. To pick a wife? Damn right. No. You damn right. Come on. No way. No, that's not true. You asked me a question and now you're going to tell me it's not true. Uh, because we know it's not true because every time we see a man that has the money and has his ability and has the pick of the litter, it gets more difficult because he doesn't know who's in it for him. Yeah, you, right. you make you make you now you're asking a loaded question, sort of like what we did on time. It was definitely loaded. I figured but, that you I but do it's loaded based on your on your bias opinion. Okay, bruiser. Um when you have the pick of the litter, you have the pick of the litter, but your discernment for the woman that would be ideal for you now becomes clouded because you do not know who to trust. Okay, so I would argue that the person that makes fifty thousand. Versus the person that makes five hundred thousand a year, there's no there's no contrast between who you can know whether or not you can trust somebody. It's still the same shit. It's gonna matter. I think you're very intelligent, but you're delusional with that statement. No man, the more money you make, I, I, I get it. I get it. Y'all are trying to throw that. Okay, guys who make more money, it's harder to trust. What I'm saying is, when you make more money and you become part of that group, you're a lot more careful and a lot less reckless on your decisions. You start actually taking your time and sharpening your knife whenever it comes to cut. 
whenever it comes to actually choosing somebody to be your wife, we're talking about somebody that's going to be your wife. We're talking somebody that's going to end up taking a portion of your resources uh, uh, in the event of a divorce. I think, they, I think they're just the opposite. I think they're more superficial. And so you pick like that. You have your pick of the litter. You're in places where uh, if you're a 500,000 heir, everybody wants you compared to a 50,000, there's access places. The access that the, the guy that makes half a million, he has access to where that guy that makes half of 100,000 will never get most of the time. And the women that are there, they know who are coming into those places and they know their intent. And those women, as you say, sharpen your knife, there's a, they got a, a lot of knives and they're all sharp. They're like ninja stars. Look, look, look at look. the discernment and your age, the cognitive dissidence. I'm going to give you, what's that girl, Drea? Who, who she just had a baby by? She's 39. What's his name? Jalen Green, Houston Rockets. Mm -hmm. You didn't think she worked that like a ham sandwich? Well, I will say this. I will say women, women are hypergamous. She she dated an NFL player. So the next guy she going to date is going to either parallel, be parallel or above that. Or she okay. going to die alone. But this is to your point. He's he's a man. You didn't, you didn't give age or anything. He's at the top of the top. His discernment for that woman, was it clouded or clear? Man, okay, so the 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 things that work for a man in dating that is not the same. It's, it's not the same thing that a man you're goes through goal, when a woman goes through. You're moving so I'm not gonna say now. that Jalen Green's mind was tra uh, uh, clouded. I would say he probably had a fetish. He probably watched her while he was growing up on on freaking NBA wives. It's like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get that. And when he, yeah. I don't even try to compare myself to guys who, who make get this NBA salaries. You said when you're guys, at the top of the game, you got better choices. And, exactly. And you do you said you sharpen your you knife know, when you're at the top of your game, and she was able. You, it, it doesn't make any sense to use somebody like an NBA player. These guys that can afford to make decisions like that. You're moving the goal. Man, he's he's not even married to her. He had a kid with her. Y'all was talking about marriage. Okay, so you think, you think it's gonna be easy for that man to get married? Oh, Sweeney, Sweeney, give me I think a I think it's way easier for a man to marry whenever he's at his maximum potential than when he's actually trying to go and grind for it. Okay, you're trying to sweep because he got it three minutes ago. That, that's me. You're asking me what I believe, and I'm telling y'all what I believe. Okay, I'm talking to what you believe. Your point, which I felt was delusional, and you made the case of the fifty thousand guy, the guy that makes fifty thousand to five hundred, he be that much more discerning i didn't say he was that much more discerning now you you you, you choose the words that i didn't you say used, i said the trust issues doesn't change based on your salary bruiser you said, said you can still be betrayed be by a woman who dates you when you're making fifty thousand versus you making a million dollars don't make no difference if somebody gonna betray okay. you that's based on their own character not based on your salary okay 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 right, we, gotta get Luis in. we gotta get Luis in there go ahead finish up kenny and let's get Luis in there okay so Excuse me if I if I misheard. You were the one that said at that level his knives would be sharpened. That means his intelligence level asked for discerning what's around him. Did you or did you not say that just a little yes, while? Yes, I said whenever you get to that level, you're gonna be a, a lot more careful about the steps you take and the decisions you make because you got a lot to lose and it took so long, so much hard, blood, sweat, and tears and sweat to get there that you're gonna be careful about your selection process when you get to your potential. And versus I just being gave here, you. a young whooping snapper out here, just selecting women and getting in relationships based off your based off of a hard on. So I didn't make a case. I didn't make a case why that didn't make sense. But that, listen, that's no, you didn't make a case because you use a twenty-two year old NBA player oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes more than one percent of the population. Bro. Sometimes it don't take a lot to get that money for some people, so they don't get to learn these skills that you're claiming they would learn during that time, like the young basketball or football player he's talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you use NBA players, you got to understand you can afford to make mistakes like that. So you don't want to use that as a a pillar to, to try to draw an understanding about the topic we make. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. OK. OK. Let's say, let's say you're 24 year old. Oh, we got to get Luis in there. Luis. So so um, so Bruiser. So based on the archetype of a person that you pretty much laid out for us, someone who, you know, is ambitious, has worked himself and has gotten them to the top of his potential, right? 
and you're saying that 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 person has the pick of the litter. I don't disagree. However, I would think that that person would value his time a lot more than most other people because they understand that there is a value attached to it. You don't want to be just attached to a bunch of other people and just string along, right? So I would think that that person will already understand who they would want and would want to go after that as opposed to being, you know what I'm saying, seeing a sea of women and just being like, oh, man, I don't know what to pick. I would think that that person has already sharpened themselves and gotten to a point like, okay, I know I have a lot of options and I know I'm attracting a lot of women, but I understand my time is valuable and my time is limited and sort of this is the type of person with these features, et cetera, and this type of character that I want to attract or that I want to be serious with. You know what I'm saying? You've already kind of filtered that out to a certain point. Although there's a seeable right next to you, you know what I'm saying? You have already have filtered that out if you're that said person because at the end of the day, you have to value your time to a degree. If you're that guy who you're, you know, who you've placed this archetype around, right? I would think that that, that would be the, uh, the the eliminating factor. Yes, that's right. And that's all about, well, you, you said it perfectly. Your time is way more important, so you actually move a little bit more careful, precariously, or whatever the word you want to use. But you got to understand, a lot of people play on their way up. When you're making progress and you're on your way to where you want to go, you're going to play. You're going to test the field here and there. You're going to see what, what it is you want and what it is you don't want. And whenever it's time to go and vet for a wife, you already know, like you said, you know the hell you want, so you know how to use that discernment, and you know you got a lot to lose, so you're going to be a lot more careful than the people who out here that's just average and not really trying to get to uh, maximize their potential. That's my whole point. That by definition means that it's harder. Say what? <laughs> that by definition means that it's harder. It's harder what? To find a wife when you got that kind of money because you are way more skeptical you are way more vigilant in how you choose and things like that and we even tell we even talk about women when they have a lot of choices it makes it more difficult for them to find a mate you at that point you're trying to weed in and out and trying to find the perfect whatever fits in you it is extremely more difficult for a man that's already there no well see that and that's and that's the initial question you asked earlier sweeney and i and i disagree and even after all that is back and forth with multiple guys on the panel I still disagree. Uh, I honestly believe that whenever you get to a point, when you get to a point where you got leverage, bro, it's 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 that much easier to find a wife because you can literally make a wife if you wanted to. I would think that you would I, have I a close believe when you get to a certain threshold, you can Wouldn't climb your way to a point where you can make a wife. You can make a wife bend to you, bend to whatever the hell you want. And do whatever the hell you want based on the leverage you got on the achievements and accomplishments you make on your progress and as does, far as leveling does up. Does that make I her the that. ideal woman for you? Because you're you're breaking her with the leverage of your finance, not the woman that is ideal for you. You completely contradicted yourself with the statement with the sharpened knives, then came back, got an example to 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 debunk what you said and you said it's like people are dogpiling on you it's not we're challenging that thing that you said i think you're very intelligent i've listened to you long before but this point that you're making is is contradictory to your initial statement i said drea young man no cognitive dissidence at the point top of the level she ate him up like a sandwich got pregnant she knew exactly what she was doing that's the lotto ticket and I think it's disingenuous to use somebody like Jalen Green. And everybody here wow. in, anywhere close to 35, 40 or above would know using we talking like about a, right now. Hold on real quick. Nah. We're talking about a damn baby in the game. Somebody who just graduated high school two or three years ago that haven't even been out here to even bro. You can't use Jalen. He's a child. Why not? So you he's can't a man. use him. He's, 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 he's a man. He's a man with he's a income. This man is using his his ability to jump uh, jump over forty inches out of the air to be able to get to that paycheck. I'm he's talking so about men who actually grind and actually been out in the trenches and worked hard and been out so here in multiple range? relationships. What age range? You don't even uh, make no sense using a 22-year-old baby to, to make a point, bro. What age range? You didn't do no grind. That ain't no damn work. 
Uh, what age range are you talking about? 35 to 40? You want to wait that long? You're trying hold, to hold on, hold on. It's even easier than that. First of all, we know 35 year old men out there who are stars and shit getting played like fiddles right now. But let's let's take it a little step further. Who's the who the motherfucker that was coaching the Boston Celtics? He was with Neil Long. You think why you think it's hard Udoka. for that nigga? You think that nigga ain't Udoka. You, Udoka. he could get married any day of the week if he wanted to. Why isn't he? He I'm didn't want to get married. Why? You gotta ask him that. How you know, know the reason married? why. No, you don't. You can't sit here and from a from a, a third person view and view and say you know why another man didn't want to get married. You don't know why that dude ain't trying to get married. Bruise at the L part. You can have you, idea, you can have an idea why married. somebody didn't get married, but you don't have a a, a solid secure. You don't have solid secure. Why that nigga don't want to get married? Get married. We talking about a man that's in a position to be able to get married when he want to. For us to sit here and say we know why he didn't get married. Did he come out on the record officially and say why he didn't want to get married to, to me alone? I, I think we know enough about Sweet. men to know why they, it becomes a lot. We know enough. Okay, and I'll get you. I agree with you. We know enough about men to say that, hey, look, we know whether or not we want to get married. As soon as maybe th three to six months, we'll know whether this woman is the one we want to marry without even having to deal with her for a long period of time. We can agree to that, can we, Sweeney? Sweeney, you a gave man knows house. whether or not he want to marry a woman. Sweeney. It doesn't take that long, bro. Especially if you already fully established. Sweeney, you took it off the point and you gave him something else to talk about. Like he tried to diminish now Jalen Green being a baby. A man that's that comes in and he, and he has no cheese. All right, we got to go ahead and switch gears next topic. Go ahead and take us home with this, Luis. Nah, I'll throw it over to Shane because I've already. Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear shit. <laughs> I've actually messaged him in the back. Shannon Ch know the reason why. I know Shannon know. Uh, so what's the next question, Jr. The audience want to know. Let's have a good show. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have a good show. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. You guys, just tuning in. Welcome to King Talk. Let's go ahead and get to these super chats. AP Accountability Partner Fat Al says salute to the panel. Brother Marcus, salute fam. Bruiser looking like my brother, Minister Malcolm. What's good to my brothers on the panel? AP again says, good dialogue. I actually enjoyed this. Good talk, gentlemen. Harrison Davis, 499, says salute, gentlemen. AP again, $20 says, God damn it, good convo, 100. With the movie producer and the brother minister said, men, look in the mirror in honesty. Uh, what's, it, what's that? Assess. Yeah, assess where you are. And work to improve yourself. Strong arm emoji. Shan always says, never settle for where you are. AP accountability partner again says, Jermaine Dupree, a.k.a. Kenny P on Darwin's neck and twisting words. Let's listen to understand, fellas, not just respond. Also, lastly, Ikene. Bad out says, rich man is exposed to women with ulterior motive. This is the reason feminine women are very dangerous. Good women are not out there in the street. I want to thank everybody that has contributed to the platform thus far. Hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into our next topic of the night. Good dialogue, fellas. Everybody good? I got you, Brother Hink. Uh, a strong man stabilizes the environment of his family through financial, physical, and spiritual security. If it is presented to the right woman, it will bring the best out of her. Of an artist by the name of Anderson Pack, he has a song. He says, "How could one thing mean so much to you, but so little to me?" And in his mind, he's trying to comprehend why do you want to kiss me all the time? Ugh, why does that matter to you? Because we're not all wired the same. And if you want reciprocity, then you must be willing to distribute what the other person desires. So with men, a lot of times, we don't understand that stabilizing an environment and catering to the makeup of your wife is going to get a different response if she is a woman of maturity. Now, if you have a stable environment, the bills is paid, the house is stable, everybody's safe, you're responsible, and then her behavior is still opposite, now you're dealing with a dysfunction on her end, which goes to how dare you take stability for granted? Because there are many women that wish they had somebody to stabilize their environment because they got to do everything. All right, let's go ahead and get into it, man. I'm going to go to Clout. Um, I, I didn't really, I didn't, I, you're going to have to go to somebody else because I didn't really get, pick up 
most of what he was trying to like I didn't get the point of what he was trying to say, what he was trying to get at or like is he he's saying like you supposed to stabilize the house or something. I don't know what he was getting at. Yeah. Basically what he's saying is that you're supposed to that if you're stay if you're stable and you stabilize everything, if you are with a good woman, it reciprocates in value. And she it it, it makes that relationship valuable and stand the test of time. Okay, I, I can answer that then. I would say, oh yeah, if you were a good woman, it don't matter if you're stable or not. <laughs> if you were a good, if you were a good woman, stable or not, she gonna make the situation better because she a good woman. You know what I mean? Your, your life could be screwed up. You got a good woman in your life, she gonna get better. Your your life your life could be good. Your life's gonna get better. So I don't think it got nothing to do with that. But um, absolutely, um, a bad woman will make any instability less stable. So a good woman will make all levels of stability more stable. A bad woman will make any levels of instability less stable. But I don't think like somehow if your life's not stable, like was she not gonna be able to be a good woman or something like that? Like I don't I don't get it. Like nah, if she good, she good. It don't matter what level of stability or, or money you got. So yeah, that's my take. Hey, hey Mark, go ahead. Uh, AP said. <laughs> I was about to respond to the AP right now. <laughs> He said it sounded like something Brother Marcus would say. Uh, I'm going to go to Luis, Trev, and then we'll get to Marcus. You on mute, Luis? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I agree with what Paul said. I, I, I mean, for a minute, it felt like the video and, and the messaging wasn't quite aligning for me. So, uh, well, I mean, the thing about it is, is that I, I think a lot of women do expect you to have some sort of foundational base, like have your shit together and sort of, I know there's a lot of dudes who are, don't have that and they have women who, you know, provide that kind of lifestyle for them. But I, I would say that I agree with the, with the messaging, you know, I think that a strong man does provide that stability and that will create the type of environment in the home that he wants for that woman. So I you. All right, go ahead, Trey. Yeah, I would agree. Some um, it's up to us as men to set the tone and dictate the pace, right? So once we are, uh, once we provide that stability, then yeah, you'll have a, a very cooperative woman. In most cases, it has to be a good woman like we were talking about, but you have to set the tone. Um, financially, if, if she's able to rest easy and not have to worry about bills, not have to go into her masculine role and, and help you in that situation, then yes, you're going to have a much easier outcome in most cases. If if she can trust you and she feels secure around you, then most likely you're going to get that cooperation that you're looking for. Um, but a lot of that, what I didn't hear him speak on too much is just um, how she feels about you, right? So it's not it's not always how you make her feel, but it's how she feels about you. If she respects you, if she admires you, if she loves you, then she's going to treat you a certain way. So that's the most important dynamic because a lot of times we'll see guys who don't have it together financially, but usually don't have a problem maintaining women, right? So it, you could just be charismatic. Um, you could be good looking sometimes. And, I, and I've seen it work, but in most cases, if you provide that stability, then she's going to follow your lead. But like I said, you got to set the tone. All right. Um, you was replaying it? Yeah, I'm going to replay it. I've seen somebody put it on there. I heard of an artist by the name of Anderson Pack. He has a song. He says, how could one thing mean so much to you, but so little to me? And in his mind, he's trying to comprehend, why do you want to kiss me all the time? Ugh, why does that matter to you? Because we're not all wired the same. And if you want reciprocity, then you must be willing to distribute what the other person desires. So with men, a lot of times, we don't understand that stabilizing an environment and catering to the makeup of your wife is going to get a different response if she is a woman of maturity. Now, if you have a stable environment, the bills is paid, the house is stable, everybody's safe, you're responsible, and then her behavior is still opposite. Now you're dealing with a dysfunction on her end, which goes to how dare you take stability for granted? Because there are many women that wish they had somebody to stabilize their environment because they got to do everything. 
All right, go ahead, Marcus. Okay, so <clears throat> I think that's what he's saying is in line with my general philosophy of um being the, the right man for the for the woman that uh he conforms a mold. So if you take care of all of those things, I believe that the woman in proximity most times will, unless she has a serious dysfunction, right? She might have a mental Ill illness or she just really despises you. Outside of that, if she's attracted to you and you hit all those metrics, I can't see a woman not flourishing and becoming her best self. And uh, I think one of the key words he used was the way that she wants to be loved or the way she needs to be loved. So when when he was saying that she wants to kiss all day, you might not be a, 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 a touch person, right? But if, if the person you're married to desires that, you have to, to feed that, um, you, you, you've got to feed that hunger in order to uh, satisfy the, the intimacy level that, that's required. And I'm sure there's some things that you may want that she don't want to do. But when she reciprocates the energy, because you are presenting all of these things, like Trev said, setting the tone, um, setting the tone and maintaining a, a, a sense of safety across the board. So that would that would be a spiritual like you 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 connect on a on a mental and a spiritual level, uh, you you you're ensuring that she feels safe at all times. She don't feel like you know you you saw for weak or the house is gonna get foreclosed on. All the things that, that physical security can provide. Uh, I, I think he's one hundred percent right. I think he's one hundred percent right, and it's in line with my general philosophy. So yeah, AP, you was one hundred percent right, but I do believe that. <laughs> What's wrong, Swinney? This nigga right here, boy, no. it slides in like clockwork. Uh, hey, the AP, you owe me a shot, bro. <laughs> I told him exactly what Marcus was going to say. <laughs> it said exactly that. Consistent is my philosophy. I truly believe this. And I, I've seen it work on too many levels. <laughs> Go ahead, JR. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead, Darwin. Yeah, I, I get what he was saying, man. And I think he spoke more to uh, indirectly appreciation. You know, women have an appreciation for stability because I think he, he, he compared women who who would kill to be in a relationship with somebody that's able to provide stability. And seeing that a woman who's not able to, if she's not able to appreciate that, and she's in a stable relationship and she lacks maturity. So uh, I know somebody said something about uh, it doesn't matter if you stable, if you got a good woman, it don't matter. I would beg to differ because uh, if you come, if you got a woman who come from a household who made her aware of how the relationship is supposed to be, uh, uh, gave her a proper re representation of how relationships supposed to a successful relationship supposed to be and a man and being able to create stability. I would say a good woman would push her man to be able to get there, to bring a stable lifestyle. And I would say a bad woman would be a bad woman who don't recognize that she needs to be in a stable environment. I think that's a clear contrast in the difference. If you're a woman out here and you and you dealing with these these dusty ass dudes that's not able to provide you a stable environment, you a bad one. I don't give a damn how much you suck it. I don't care. You a bad woman. You a good woman if you motivate and push this man and say, hey man, you need to get off your ass and do something. I come from a different, I come from a household where my daddy said, this is not the way it's supposed to work. My mom and dad have been married for 20, 30 years and he been created a stable environment. I'm not going to stand up for that. That's a good woman right there because she's going to push you to get where you're supposed to be so you can create a stable environment for her. That's a good woman. <laughs> so don't come on this panel talking about you ain't got to sure be, she wouldn't be settling? Be a man. Don't come on this panel talking about you ain't got to be a man uh, that creates a stable vitamin regardless of the if she good about uh, she a good woman. You can come in here with a broken uh, household. I'm not going to go for that. And I don't want any brother listening to this panel to think that because you're not able to create a stable environment, it don't matter if you got a good woman. Hell no. If you got a good woman, you ruining that woman if you ain't creating a stable environment for her. So miss me with that. So for Don, when you sit there and said earlier that you, a woman shouldn't have to do that for you, you should be already established. She shouldn't have to motivate you to do anything. Yeah, yeah. She, she shouldn't have to settle. 
Why should hold she on, settle? So, hold on, why, hold on. Why, why, why should why should a woman like that settle for a man who's not stable? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. What did you say, Hank? Earlier, you said that said a man should be established and got his shit together, right? So why does she need to motivate me if my shit's already together? I don't need what her to motivate you? me. You just, I already your own I got you just answered your own question, which was was, was well, almost like. Said. Is that a rhetorical question or that's an actual you actually answering asking no, me this question? I'm just making a statement what you said. So why did this woman? I need said to come a in? man. I said a man who's established and he's reached his maximum potential finds it easier to be able to find a wife because he's but able to you, create stability. But then, what did you just say with your statement just a minute ago? I just made a statement against what Clout Jones saying when he said that it don't matter if you if you got a good woman, it don't matter if you stable or not. And that wasn't my words. That was his words. And I'm just challenging him on that. We on a panel with brothers and we got other brothers and young men listening. We can't have that. But you if you got a good... That, you said that said that the woman came from this. Why has he got... She got to motivate me if I already should be ready-made and already motivated. What I'm saying... So you you should. You're right. You, you tell right. me about it's, history. I'm not... Listen, my fight, is not, my fight is not with you, Hank. You, 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 you're You're right. She shouldn't, she shouldn't have to motivate you, but there's okay. situations where a woman has to light a fire in your ass. If it's a good woman, if it's a good woman, she will light a fire in your ass and say, Hey, look, I'm not going for this. I came from a household with a man in my life. The men that raised me, my forefathers, my daddy and my grandfather, they didn't go for this. They created stable environments for my grandmother and my mother. You just proved so this woman is gonna lay the fire in your ass and say, I'm we're talking about a person who's not able to create stability in a relationship. We didn't change the terms from the top the guy that I was talking about in the previous topic. We're Which talking is, about somebody he said it don't matter if you're able to create a stable environment. If she a good woman, it don't matter. I'm just I'm just pushing back on that. That's all I'm doing. My you, have fire you have to understand the difference between what Klaus said and what Hink is also saying. Hink said, Well, if you're already there. You wouldn't need a woman to have to push you. And then you re you responded to him by saying, some women going to have to tell a nigga to get up off his ass. I would assume okay, well, let me that a it. nigga that has to get up off his ass isn't a stable man if he has to be pushed to get up off his ass by his I'm woman. I found proof I this point when he says, sometimes you ain't even got to be stable. A good woman going to be a good woman anyway, and an unstable woman just going to make an unstable I situation. Know, are trolling, but I trolling. I don't know if y'all trolling, but I'm totally with you and Hink, Swinney and Hink. Y'all made the same point. I'm totally with y'all. If the dude is stable, is if he's already made, if he already reached his max potential, she uh, she would be able to recognize that. Therefore, there would be no need for her to light a fire in his ass. We can agree to that, right? So that question is done. It doesn't even make no sense to submit. I don't know if it was a troll token or whatever the hell you want to call it to get it fired up. That's cool. I'm with it. I'm with the smoke. But my point is, if you're able to create, let's be clear, if you're able to create a stable environment, obviously a woman who appreciates you and she's a good woman, like the pastor said, and she's a mature woman, she'll be able to recognize it and she'll be able to sit back in her femininity. But if you out here like somebody like Cloud, now I'm not saying it's you, Cloud Jones, I'm just talking about the statement you made. You said, if you got a good woman, you don't have to create a staple vibe. She's going to ride with you forever, regardless. I'm saying that's a bad woman. If I, I will challenge any woman who's with a man right now today, and she's in an unstable environment, and she's with a man, and she may be a good one, I would challenge you to go in here and have a talk with this dude. That's what I would tell my daughter. If this dude ain't creating a stable environment for you, and it's something that he portrayed, something that he's advertised, I would challenge every woman to walk up to that dude and have a conversation. I'm like, hey, look, man, what are we gonna do about this? That's my thing. So you would say that your like, so for instance, if you're talking to your daughter and you know that your daughter is a good woman and she's pushing an unstable dude or somebody who didn't create stability in her life to level them up, you would say, Hey, you need to go have a talk with this dude. Would you then turn tell your daughter she's a bad woman? So or would you understand that you have a good woman that's probably made a bad choice in a man? I would say she, I would I would say, hey, look, you made a bad decision getting with this brother. If he's not able to continue to if he's not able to provide a stable environment for you. You need to have a conversation to figure out where things are going. And if it ain't going the way you think it should go to, to create that stable environment, you need to peel out. That's no solid, doubt. Bruiser. Wait, 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 that's solid right there. What he just said is solid. The other part, what the pastor said, getting back on the topic. 
you should be in an ideal situation. You should be financially secured. You should be able to give her the physical things that she needs. Also, the spirituality to show that you're cleave for her. And any woman put in your covering that doesn't appreciate that should be gone. But as for the conversation, how it's straight off to your point, if you can find a woman, even though not every man is going to be on his square, if you can find a woman, going back to what we said about the 50000 guy, the $500,000 guy, if you can find a woman that you're not where you're at, because a lot of brothers I know are not waste, but they just ain't aligned with their purpose. And you got a woman saying, baby, I'm going to rock with you till the wheels fall off. But you're going to get right, and I'm going to be here arm to arm with you. That's another thing. The initial thing that you said, Bruiser, about a guy that is just like, it doesn't make sense, that's your daughter. That's why they made that term toxic love. There's a difference. Somebody who's not on his feet and got that woman that could get it from scratch with him. I get that point. I see how those two converge. You're absolutely right. The toxic one. If you love your daughter, you, you listen, what's going on over here? Does he have any ambition? What's going on with that? I, I get what you're saying. Clout? Yeah, I got to push back on that. That that <laughs> Nah, that Bruce is making a good point. I appreciate you. that, Kenny. Now you just leveled up, bro. All right, well, 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 to give a little more more context on what I was saying as far as like you don't have to create stability. And the reason why I said that is because even the guy in the video made it clear that not all women want stability. I know maybe y'all y'all seem to think that every woman is looking for stability, but from my experience with women, not every woman's looking for uh, stability. Some women are looking for excitement. Some women are not looking for stability. Wow. So that's so what so I said, based if she's a good woman, it doesn't matter what you're providing, she's going to balance it out meaning if you're if you're with a good woman and you provide excitement for example, let's say you're a dope boy and you're, make, and you're running through the streets, you're shooting at ops, and you're and you flipping packs, right? A good woman to that, to that man is going to help him get his shit stabilized. Okay, cool. Well, while you're in the streets, I'm going to do this with the money. I'm going to make sure X, Y, Z. I'm going to make sure the kids are safe, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So I'm saying not every dude provides stability, and not every woman even wants stability. I mean, in the example the guy gave, he said he was uh, saying to about women, like, how, how dare you even not want stability? Because there are plenty of women that want it. But again, I'm speaking holistically. I'm not just speaking of one type of woman. Some women do want stability. Some don't need it at all. So that's what I'm speaking for. So you're speaking holistically. Of women that are out of order. Like. Real quick, Lewis, I'll fly. I'll land the plane real quick. You're speaking to women that's out of order. Clout, who sets the tone in a household? Man, obviously. Okay, Lewis, you got it. But stability isn't the only way to set a tone. Like you can, you can be a great leader and be unstable. I, I've seen it plenty of times. You can be a great leader, great at, at, at putting order down, but your situation's not stable. You could, be a, you could be a person who hustles, who has great principles, great discipline, but your life is up and down. It's not stable. And the right woman comes along into your life and helps to stabilize that life. That's all I'm talking about. We're not, yeah, yeah, like stabilization and leadership are not the same thing. Uh, again, like I said, I could be in the streets moving packs. I could be up and down, make it, making tw uh, uh, two grand a day flipping packs, and my life's not stable. But I meet the right woman, and my life becomes more stable because she's a good woman. And that's not a good scenario for somebody who's a leader that's leaving, living an unstable life. I would say there are a lot of people who are leaders that live unstable lives. Okay, you, so, you, okay, give you, us you a could scenario. be Alexander the Great. You could be Alexander the Great. You could be a conqueror. Alexander the Great didn't sleep in the same bed every night, my brother. The dude was did not live a stable life. He was conquering land, but he was one of the greatest conquerors of all time. Genghis Khan did not live a stable life, my brother. He didn't live a, 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 a balanced life. Genghis Khan was going from country to country, killing and pillaging, but still, again, probably one of the greatest leaders of all time. Napoleon Bonaparte did not have a stable life. Again, great leader, great military strategist. So, so okay, so I, I think I think Clout, where I think where you missing it is that you're talking about people. You, you, I think you, I think you need to understand what stability is. I would, I would argue that stability is being being able to consistently provide resources on a level of being. And able I, to, that's where we disagree because that's not what I call stability. Provide, you okay, what do you call resources stability? and all of that? What is stability cool. for you? Stability, MFL, let's go with your example of stability. I want, let, let's continue with your example. Continue with what you were saying before. So, I, so all the guys you named, Genghis Khan, all these great conquerors, 
they have the resources to be able to consistently provide. Uh, they have the ability to consistently provide resources on a level to be able to take care of a family. Okay, I'm gonna give you an they example. They don't necessarily got to be home. What, what would you say? Would you say Juice World? You know, you know who Juice World is? You know who Juice World is? Who? You know who Juice World is? Juice World, the artist. Yeah, Juice World, the artist. Would, would Would you say he was stable? I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. Uh, okay, Little, all right, all right. Um, I'm trying to- Little Nas? What? No, 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 stop. I didn't say Little Nas. Hold on, brother, brother. Give me a second. I'm, tr I'm trying to use another example. Um, uh, <laughs> DMX. DMX is a perfect example of this. DMX was not stable, but DMX had resources. He had plenty of resources. He had yeah, no, he smoked all his resources. He had no resources. But, but what I'm saying is DMX resources. at any time yeah. could have did a show and made a hundred grand like that. DMX had bread. He had access to bread, but he wasn't stable. How how we go so far off the line of the initial time? You asked me to give an example. Oh, oh can, I, can I remind you what the statement you made? The, the statement you made was hey, you can be a leader. You can be a leader and not get, create stability. That's what you said. Absolutely. You wouldn't say DMX was a leader? Can you, you don't be think led DMX by had okay, the power to no. lead men? You don't think so? Uh, I'm gonna hold you to what the you said. Same guy whose life was in shambles and was, was on drugs. You don't think? Okay, Cloud. Let the question you be think, asked. You don't think millions of people were moved okay, by his words? Okay, you can run on. You can run on with the monologue. I'm gonna hold you to what you said. From DMX's behavior and his actions, and he told you, "Be under my leadership." Would you be confident to be under his leadership? I wouldn't be under any man's leadership, but that's that's that's. You're not crazy. answering the question. I'm not a woman. Wait, wait, wait. Woman, not ask, I I okay. If if Shannon ran a system and I was in his military and I'm one of his soldiers and he's an upright general, make sure that we get home every time. I'm right. under his leadership. Right. DMX was a, as you saying, okay, that man, right? DMX says, yo, rock with me. Do what I do. Would you feel confident under his leadership from his behavior and you know what he did? His it other his other it, de it depends on what I'm seeking. It depends on what I want out of life. Like like do I do I want do I want a, a, a disciplined life or do I want to turn up? If I want to turn up and have a good time, I'm going with DMX every time over Shannon. If I want a if I want a disciplined life, I'll probably go with Shannon. Which Thank is you, which bro. goes back to the example I gave about women. You, Not bro. all you women want stability. Leaderships show you and dictate outcomes. So you take DMX's leadership and follow his outcome. Again, it depends on the outcome if I want. If I want the outcome he had, I would follow his leadership. If I want the outcome Shannon would provide, then I would follow his leadership. It depends on the outcome I want. All right, let me go ahead and try to get the other brothers in. Whoever spoke on it, I know Shane spoke. Hank, you spoke on it? All right, go ahead. Well. Damn, I mean, we we all over the place just now. But as far as uh, the statement that's being made, uh, as far as uh, strong man to civilized environment for his family, is, is financial. Yeah. Well, look, as a leader, you 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 want to be financially stable for your family. You know, what I'm saying you you that's that's what you should want. You, you, you know, if if you're not financially stable, then a, a, a real one, a real woman, should want to be with your ass, because you'll waste a damn time. Because any minute you could be evicted, your your power could be turned off, your water could be shut off, and who who wants to deal with an individual like that? That's not showing me leadership at all, in no forms of fashion. So you know, to to be uh, with somebody who's stable and and and, and financially stable. And especially emotionally stable, that's another thing we 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 really nobody really talked about. Because what if you you loosen the head like I think what Kenny was y'all y'all was using DMX? Well, he was a dope fan. Yeah. <laughs> What's stable about that? And nothing stable about a dope fan. So I'm gonna leave it there. All right, go ahead, brother Sham. <clears throat> interesting night tonight love it you know uh a strong man stabilizes the environment of his family through financial physical and spiritual security 
And if it's presented to the right woman, it will bring out the best of her. No. Your boy Shan says no. Because people are under the impression that people change. People don't change. Women don't change, typically. She is going to be who she's going to be. Here's something that all of you have heard before. You can take a woman out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of her. That proverb was created for a reason, fellas. That, that old adage comes from many, many years of trial and error and men going to the ghetto and grabbing women and thinking that they're going to change because he's brought her into a stable environment and thinking by putting her over there, they're going to be different. We had a whole TV show called The Hillbillies back in the day. I, well, y'all a little too young to even remember that TV show. No, I've seen Beverly Hillbillies. I know what? Beverly Hillbillies. You know, think you can go to Beverly Hills and suddenly be, be different than who you were? That's, that's not how that works. A good woman is a good woman, no matter her environment. And let me re let's rephrase this. This is what I believe. A strong man, he stabilizes the environment of his family through financial, physical and spiritual security. If he's presented or if that is presented to the right woman, it will bring the best out of you. I was rocking with, I think, if I recall correctly, uh, um, Bruiser and, well, not Bruiser, not Bruiser, uh, Darwin and Clout was on, was kind of like saying the same thing. I believe that if you had a stable environment, a stable uh, uh, security and financial setup and everything was good, all good in the hood at your house under your roof and you had the right woman, she'll make that even stronger for you. She's your helpmate. You're not hers. So the solution is you must, gentlemen, all kings, princes who are soon to be kings, you must, must, must identify and avoid and or fix, if you have the energy, her dysfunction. Otherwise, there's nothing you can do to bring out the best in her because you could take her out of the ghetto if you want, bring it to your stable environment with money and a comfortable bed and a comfortable place to live and a picket fence, safe neighborhood, ring cameras all over the place, air condition. If she's fucked up, she's going to be fucked up in that environment or back in the hood. It just is what it is, man. Do not think that you're going to always be able to fix a bird with a broken wing. Far too many people think that they see a problem in somebody or a dysfunction and they can bring them over into their environment. What happens is they will. Uh, what does a bad apple do to the bunch? You think that won't happen to you? You think just because you bring in bad apples into your healthy bunch, you're going to make that bad apple a healthy apple. That's not how it works. So, no, my answer is, and I know some others may disagree, uh, you'll bring out the best of her. No, people are who they are. And it's important that you find a woman that's solid. And if there's a dysfunction in her, is it something that you can work through? Is it something that you can, you can, you can go through therapy with? Is it something that you can get out of her and, ma and make that better before you bring her into the environment? Then do so. Other than that, skip on past her, brothers, and go to somebody that's already ready to go. As as long as you add the caveat that you it's possible to fix her prior to you bringing her in, then we in agreement. Because I'm I'm not advocating for just you know finding the worst person, wife them, and then they become somebody new within a relationship. That part is part of the vetting phase. So if you remember when I always say, if you could find somebody that you you if you have the skill set to work through the issues that they have, then you can further that relationship. And then go into the other relationship dynamics and the power equilibrium and those things. But yeah, yeah, man, everybody can get fixed if they're yeah. willing to do so. One thing I don't want men to do here's a, here's something. Let me throw this out here real quick, Jr. Do not work on somebody else's improvement harder than they work on their own. A lot of times, you guys have put a lot of effort into somebody because you see potential and you realize that you're you're working harder for them to be better than they're working for themselves to be better. You got to catch that early. 
if you find somebody else being lazy or or apathetic about becoming a better person and you're trying to do shit and put them through shit and work on stuff and establish things to make them better, harder than they are, let that go. But yeah, yeah, everybody can get fixed. As long as they cooperative. Yeah, we in agreement, Steve. No, we ain't. <laughs> we why not, not Sweeney? Tell, tell me why y'all don't agree. Because that's essentially the philosophy I, I laid out in front of you. Uh, no, the steps no. after you get her. Nah, no, you you think anybody is fixable? I do, I do have a question. Years. You can make yeah. an uncooperative woman cooperative. All of that stems a part of, uh, and, and y'all said it, you said it, and then you tried to slide that shit in there like you ain't been preaching right. something different for the last three weeks. That's the same thing I'm saying. Nah, you tried to slide in. Yeah, if she's willing to get fit. That means she got to be cooperative. <laughs> Bro, I said, so it, the thing that's that's the intangible, the variable that, that, that you got to isolate for is if you are somebody she wants to do that for, that would make her cooperative. You see how that works? No. If, that, not the guy, that, hold on, that, if, if, you are, if you are not the guy that she wants to be cooperate with, then you cannot fix her. You have to pass on her. But if she has specific character traits that you dislike and she wants to be with you because she wants to be with you, she will attempt to fix those things. You can assist her in fixing those things. Thus, have a healed woman. But you need to be healed yourself in order to do that process. Nah, I've got a question. Go ahead, Clap. Yeah, I got a quick question. Um, we would all agree here. Like, do we all agree here that uh, a woman is a help me to a man? We agree with that. Yes. So, so Surely. my question is, if if we consistently always say that we understand that a woman is a help me to a man, then why do we consistently push this narrative that somehow a man's life is supposed to be stable before he gets a woman? How does that make any sense? If a woman's job is to help him. How the hell is he supposed to get stable without no help? See, what you're How does that to make do, sense? Because y'all can, I know, hold on, I just want to add to that because we consistently do this. We talk about, oh, well, if he needs to, wants to have a woman in his life and he needs to get stable and this and that and that. Well, that makes him a help me. That means he's helping her get her life together. And last I checked, that's not how it works. If a woman is a help meet to a man, then no, a man's not supposed to be stable first to get a woman because that's what her job is. Her job is to help him get there. Duh. She's to help me. He needs help. He's not supposed to do it on his own and then give her all and share all the shit that he got on his own with her. That's the dumbest concept I've ever heard. But we consistently keep pushing that idea. Oh, yeah, man's supposed to, he's supposed to have it all together and be stable. Where in the hell does that happen? It doesn't, which is why God made woman. Literally, Adam was alone in the damn, in the damn wilderness, and God said, damn it, this nigga needs some help. And he got him a woman, but we come on here and y'all niggas consistently sit here and make it sound like niggas is supposed to be the king of the motherfucking jungle before he gets a woman in his life. Like he's supposed to be motherfucking King Kong before a woman walks into life. And that's fucking stupid. It does Talk not cloud. make sense. So cloud, let, me do, let, me, yeah. well, let, me, let me let me try to point it out a little bit. So one, um, the garden was stable already before she got there. He was lonely. God saw that Adam was lonely and he wanted and he, and he wanted a, a companion. And so when he brought her in to the already established and stable environment that he was already the, the garden that he was already taking care of and was already rolling along and growing. She came to help him take it to the next level. See, what you're doing is I think you're saying men can be all out of whack and the woman to come in and settle the dust. And what we're saying is men need to have that dust settled before he sought rocks with a woman and then from there propels forward. I want to make sure that my car is riding. I want to make sure that my ship is built. But I could, could I, I certainly would like to have a co-pilot. I don't necessarily need her to help me build this ship. I don't need her to help me build this plane and get it flying. But I could certainly use a good crew. I but can't fly this plane say, all Shannon. by myself. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want no co-pilot. Y'all talking about having co-pilots. No, I'm, I need help building my ship that I'm going to pilot. You understand what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't need that's, no, that's I'm, not, I'm not trying to build no ship by myself and then have you come in and think you're going to have 50% rights on how to pilot the motherfucker. But that's, that's fine. Well, you you, you that, need help. You need help grinding. You need help on the grind. Not, that's cool. No, 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 I know it, a lot of brothers it, like you that like. It, it, it has nothing to do with. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before, hold on. Watch yourself, bro. It has nothing to do with needing help on the grind. That's not what I'm talking about. 
What I'm trying to say is that I understand a woman's position is a help me. I'm not going to sit here and act like that's not her job. So what I'm saying is y'all are, y'all are, y'all are trying to alleviate her from doing her damn job, which is to help you. Oh, well, I could do it on my own. For what? What? What's the point in that? Then you might as well be single. The point of a woman being in your life is to assist you in your mission. That's her whole purpose. So stop telling niggas that they need to do their mission on their own and, and just, just give away all the spoils of their mission to the woman. Like, no, she's supposed to be helping him with that mission. That is her job. We're not, we're not taking that job off of her shoulders to make her life easier and, and turn it into a bunch of tricks and simps. And that's what so, I feel like I keep, I keep hearing okay. getting advocated on here. Oh, make her life easier. You do all the hard work and blow, your, blow a bag on her. Are you dumb? That's not that's not no real nigga shit, bro. Like, no, so, bro. Her job is to assist okay, me no, in my greatness. Period. End of story. So stop telling niggas the opposite. I just kind of take us into the main topic. Like, why would men get married when they can work and provide for themselves? Let me go ahead and play this clip and we can continue this dialogue. Man wants to get married. He's only getting married truly for one reason. Because let me be honest with you women. The men can work and provide for themselves. He does not necessarily need you to cook, clean, and have sex because he can get sex for multiple women. They're giving it out. A lot of them can cook and clean. Their mother taught them or they can pay someone to get it. The culture is telling them, do not get married. So why would a man go past what the culture is telling him and choose to have a wife? Because with a wife, you can now have love. You can now have nurturing. You can have support. You can have affection. This is what he can't get from a roommate. So if that is not what you're leading with in your relationships with men is love support nurturing and respect this is why your husband is now pulling away because in the beginning you gave him those things but as you got into the relationship you got bitter you got resentful you start seeing his flaws start counting that against him you start measuring him against other men and now you're pulling back on the love the affection and the nurturing we're going to try to tie this all in together with this conversation that we have. And why would men get married when they can work and provide for themselves? All right. Whoever wants to go. Go ahead, Shane. I think you were trying to say something. Well, no, I was just addressing what Clout was saying. Um, but what I was getting ready to say isn't really tied into this into this next question. He, he was mentioning, like, you know, I don't need anybody to um, co-pilot. I need somebody to help me build. I, I need a mechanic to help me put the wings on and, and, and put the engine in and get the plane and, and, and do the test flights and all that kind of stuff. Whereas all I, that, we're but, saying. But, not all that, but ho- hold the wrench for me. You know what I mean? Like, like you hold the, hold the flashlight steady. You know what I mean? Got it. And what we're, where we're saying is men should in fact build the plane and then have somebody help him operate it. And then it's, it's weird because you say well, she shouldn't come in. You know, you know, who's going to actually want 50% of that shit is the motherfucker that sat there and watched you build it and helped you build it and pass the wrench and, 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 and put the engine in when it was in uh, putting the wheels on. That's the person that's going to feel entitled to half the fucking spoils of that plane. Not the person that's coming in and co-piloting. So that was a little backwards, but that's the one that does it though. But let, let's just stick with the topic. You know, why would men get married when they can work and provide for themselves? Why would men get clout? Why would they you tell us why would men get married if they can do everything that they, they need to do? What's the purpose of getting married to begin with? Or why would they need to do that in 2024? Clout. I, I would think the only reason is if the person they're marrying can assist them in what it is that they're doing. Essentially, if you ain't shooting in the gym with me, What's the point? That that that's that's the logic that Cloud is basically going off of. If you ain't with me shooting in the gym, then why is it that I'm gonna bring you in after the fact after I've already arrived? Which kind of leads to the question that I asked earlier, which was I was trying to explain the bruiser is that's why it's so much harder for a man that's already arrived to get married because he's already there. What I would explain, what I would say is the reason why you would want to get yourself established first, because you can get yourself established to a point where you have leverage and you can dictate the terms of your relationship. You get what I'm saying? So if you're going into a relationship with a woman and she helped you build the ship, she got a say on how the relationship is going to run. And a lot of these women today, if we want to be honest, they don't want to submit to a man where they got to do most of the work or half of the work or most of the work. Isn't that in terms of to help a motherfucker build half the shit? 
it's, that's their it, argument. Listen, I get it, but that ain't how the things that ain't how it work. It's working today. But if somebody helps you literally build half the ship, you don't think they should have a say in how that motherfucker runs? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah they, they should. should. Yeah, but, I but, agree. but the thing about it is, Sweeney, is are the men okay? Do you see in the situations of men are actually okay with that? You have men out here. A lot of men want their women to, if you ain't shooting in the gym with me, then what the fuck is the purpose of me being with you now? That's literally what a lot of men are saying yeah. today. No, a lot of men are wanting these women to be fully submissive and do what they say. But who, they don't have a do what they heard, say relationship hey, dynamic. Who have you heard say, I want a woman that provides half the money, half the household, and I don't want and, and I want her to provide, <laughs> come in and do everything in the house, and she better do everything I want her to do, and I ain't doing shit. Tell me one man that you've heard say that shit. Okay, well, I will say this. There's not. There may not be a lot of men saying that now, but that that is how the old style of relationships were. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was, man. Women would sit down and have 10, 15 kids and shit and sit at home and stay at home. Stay at the house and that nigga be out the house 18 hours out the day. Yeah, but that's still doing work, bro. But I get it. I get it. You're punching the clock. You're punching the clock. There's an equivalence to that. When a woman goes to work, she's working in the house and she's taking care of the kids. She's cleaning and cooking. She's up on her feet working. What that what I'm not saying. What I'm saying is, is that she it's still balanced out. She's at home. He ain't got no choice. She ain't got no choice but to do the work because he's working 18 hours outside. She do have a choice. She do have a choice. If she decides she don't want to go fucking clean up the dishes, she can decide to unless you're gonna put some, uh, left and right on top of her head. Come on, man. Most people understand that shit needs to get done. That's what yeah, she gonna say? You, you sitting here acting like so. You sitting here acting like. Okay, I get I give a woman a lot of credit, bro. But I don't walk in houses, I don't been to neighbors' friends' houses. The women ain't cleaning up shit and they staying at home. Oh, and I ain't talking about the women. We talking you I'm said this is how it used to be. I'm like that is, not the case. What, what I, the whole part the whole you try to relate it back to what I said on the first question. The whole reason why the whole my whole premise on the first question is to be able to have leverage to get the woman, the type of woman you wanted. Getting her to do things that you wanted to do in the household. That ain't got nothing. It's nothing you can pay for. I mean, you can maybe be able to pay for it, but it's it's a temporary thing. Getting a woman to do what she's supposed to do as a woman, she has to be able to do. That's something she had to have in encompassing herself as a woman, as being a woman. What, I'm no, talking think, about the essence. Of what I was referencing. That's this exactly movie. what I said. That's her as a woman, which is why I said it don't matter if you're stable or not. If she's a good woman, she's going to play her role as a good woman. So thank you, Bruiser, for proving my point. Okay, so okay, marriage, you sticking on the oh, your role of a good woman that you changed sticking, it. sticking on the caption. Uh I believe marriage is a bad contract. I believe, and I'm speaking in my opinion, that it's nothing that I really want to do, and it's mostly for a woman's gratification. People get married because once you get married, a, a woman has you by the, the cojones at that point in time. You can do all those things as stated. You're just doing what you feel is traditional, even though it's a Western way, because we picked that up when we got over here. A woman has the contractual obligation to step in after the fact, per certain contracts or states, to say she's entitled to half your stuff. And she didn't build not one iota to put a brick up, put a drape up, put a bed in. The richest women in the world have accrued their wealth from what? Divorce. From signing that contract. It is the worst contract since they gave Vince Young all that money. Oh, wait, Albert Hainsworth, if you know football, that $100 million contract. I know it sounds... It might sound sacrilegious to some people. If I go in certain people's houses, I know the utensils going to hit their plate. But I have an aunt and an uncle. They never signed a, a piece of paper, but they've been together about 53, 54 years right now. That's the worst contract, and I'll just leave it at that. Kenny, let me ask you a question. So, go. If, all right, let's say, for instance, you got a man and a woman, right? Both of them start off broke, they both work. Grind hard as hell, make babies. Both um have to 
raise the kids together, go to work, send the kids to daycare. They do all this shit. They both buy a house together. They both get cars together. 15, 20 years, that shit doesn't work out. Judge says, bust that shit down the middle. Is that an unfair deal for both of them? No. That's not an unfair deal. But now I'm giving you the caveat. The majority of marriages today, due to the, due to the untraditional way things are, because things ain't like yesteryear. You can go to California where uh, Shannon is, right? You can meet a woman that you supposedly love. You could be that 500,000 here. She coming with that maid status. Let's take Tiger Woods. <laughs> you made that woman a mogul. And she was the maid that she was banging on the side. That's for those cases. And how many cases a woman leaving from things that they built from scratch? I'm not going to stand and say I know the stats on that, but the that is an ideal case where, okay, no, we made this together. We got it from the mud. But the majority of the stories you hear are men left penniless, broke, running from child support because that contract. Well, that, that actually goes and proves Klaus' point, which I was in agreement with, which is I need you to sit here and build this shit with me because if it's all said and done, he even said it. Yeah, if we have to split and they say we're going to give her half, you deserve it at this point. You, you were sitting there putting the shit together right along with me. You was the, you was there for the long nights and late mornings and I mean early mornings and late nights and all of that. So at that point, um, I don't think any man will have a problem splitting and losing half his shit to a woman that actually did something. But that initial point, his POV on that initial point, I don't think we had a disagreement oh, about. Okay, okay, it's the other things as for how how laissez fair he dealt with like uh, a woman in certain other points that point was i agree with him on that point but no nah. but yeah. as for sticking on the topic at hand nah so That's one I guess, of the worst contracts made in history so i guess then what we what tra uh what cloud is basically telling me and is saying no nah, find you a woman that's willing to get in there grind it out with you because once you make it Back to the title of, of this topic is once you make it, I'm already looking at you sideways to find out if you even if even worth it at that point or not. Is it worth losing it all? Because let's keep it a bean. When you already done it all, you really are looking exactly for what that woman just said. You're looking for love and, and whatever other bullshit she said. Is that worth half your shit if it, if it ends? No, I I would say I, I would gonna, say the, uh, go, go ahead go ahead Darwin then let's get Luis and Trey. I would say I would say man uh, just having to being a, being and being aware like man if you got if you done built your ship and then you get in a relationship just taking the precautions man I get it women are taking half of the stuff but I think it's based on the the negligence of the man decision making and preparation before you get married. There's a thing called prenuptial agreement you can do. And a lot of guys, if I've seen uh, watching a lead attorney break down a lot of these these uh, prenuptial agreements, they're doing the shit wrong. They adding all these unnecessary clauses and they screwing themselves away, uh, screwing themselves over in the courtroom. But things do work. It just all depends on how you type it up. But I think the woman is right, man. You you uh you can you can build yourself up. And, and get everything you want, and you shouldn't make that uh, a qualifier to go get in a relationship. I I'm, I personally believe being able to be self-sustaining and, and establish yourself as a man should be something that you just want to do as an individual. But what man? You know, and so it, it doesn't necessarily be whether why or not you should get married. Is who are you as a man? Do you who, who do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you see yourself living in a high-rise high apartment? Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with a woman being on your hip. That's just who you are as a man. Do you see your wear, self wearing a suit, uh, driving a Mercedes? That's who you are as a man. Got shit to do with a woman. That's just who you are as a man. Now, when whenever you have those things, we have to agree that there are certain women that uh, are attracted to those. A lot of women are attracted to those things, but it's certain women that you're gonna, you know, have. They're gonna have to meet a criteria for you because you. Are liked by many women. You get what I'm saying? A lot of women want you, so you're gonna want to get the best. Basically, once you level yourself up to a certain point, you're gonna want the best you can get. 
point blank. There That's women, the whole point of that. There are women dropping niggas who got the pick of the litter right now. Left and yeah, right. But, but but we're doing the same thing women do whenever we say, oh, there's men that do that. We, we talk no, about there's, exception. there's literal evidence that women are dropping men left and right. There is no leverage in those scenarios. He there's ain't got no, no leverage in what scenario. In those scenarios that you're talking about, where you're talking about these dudes who done leveled up and had all this money and they can't, they got the pick of the litter, they women are leaving them left and right. And why? Because they have the leverage of being able to leave his ass and take they take his shit with them. They so, don't. So, there so, is no so, leverage in that so scenario. Listen, I, I'll follow you on that. I like. I'm gonna pull one of Kenny P's cards. I don't have the statistics on how many men are leveling themselves at the top and women are leaving them. Like you so called left and right. What is the statistics on just not even necessarily leveling yourself in the top 10 percent, but just being self-sustained and established to be able to provide for a family? You're saying that majority of these the, the relationships are failing even at that point. No, I didn't say that. OK, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think you're talking about an exceptional, exceptional cases. No, I'm, what? Saying, I'm saying my recommendation. I'm, if I'm if I'm giving a recommendation to a group of men that's starting out, that's going out here to work. I'm going to say, hey, look, get yourself to where you want to be, not based off of the woman you want. But where do you see yourself as a man and where you OK with being at that position as a man? Then go and date. And if you're not there, hold off until you get there. That's How does the that need to be a prerequisite for dating? Huh? How does that need to be a prerequisite for marriage? If you that guy, you're going to be that guy, whether you're married, dating or not. It doesn't matter. You're going to get where you're going to go anyway. Because that's what kind of man. I'm not saying it's a prerequisite for marriage. It's just a prerequisite for you being comfortable and having an ease of mind of who you are as a person. You found your identity and your purpose in life, and you're comfortable with who you are when you approach the person that you're going that you're going to turn the cards in for. Like this is who I am. This is all that I have. This is all I am. This is my entire body of work. What do you have in return for that, lady? So you're speaking about being self-actualized, right? Yeah, I'm saying being being who you are, getting yourself to who you want to be. You don't have to get I mean, there to be self actualized. You are my player on the game. Yeah. We got Making yourself a 99 overall. If you see yourself as a 99 overall, shit, grind to you a 99 overall. All right, go, ahead. go ahead, Luis. Yeah. No, nah, it's been a good it's been a good uh conversation. I mean, I will say this, you know, based on what some of the brothers have shared. You know, some men are falling in love and some women are falling in business. You know, <laughs> that, that we need to be very clear about what is being talked about out here by women. What are women teaching other women and where the finesse lies, right? You guys cannot be out here. Most dudes cannot be out here, you know, wide, you know, wide eyed, bushy tail and thinking that it's all rosy. A lot of these chicks have an agenda and you just have to understand it. With that being said, there are some men who are looking for a co-pilot and there are some men who are looking for a flight attendant. You have to understand what type of man you are and what you're looking for specifically, you know, to Clout's point and to Darwin's point, because, you know, they, although they, they seem on the opposite end of the, of the coin, but they both circle around and bring pretty much home. And as far as, you know, the topic is concerned, I mean, one of the things that I kind of wrote down and I thought about, so we kind of built a society already that has everything from Uber Eats to delivery to dry cleaners to, you know, you can have my your groceries sent to your house. You know what I'm saying? You could have a calendar. You know what I'm saying? AI calendar. Or you can hire someone overseas that oversees your schedule and stuff like that. We have automated and streamlined our life in such a way where we kind of don't need each other, although we do need each other because we are better together. But with the advancement of technology, it, it's created a cloud, you know, of illusion that, oh, like I have all these things, you know what I'm saying, that streamline my life from, you know, whether working out, eating, traveling, et cetera that I, I don't need this person, you know, men and women alike on both sides of the aisle. But to just kind of talk about the topic at hand, I think a lot of men will do better in terms of, you know, they won't eat out as much. They'll be a lot more healthier and more cautious about certain things. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that it's also important to have somebody in that corner because the woman in the video talked about, you know, having a supportive, 
you know, someone that who's supportive, nurturing, and all those things. You can't necessarily get that from an empty vessel. You know, I think a lot of people are trying to draw blood from a from a stone that that, that there isn't no life. And although those things create a particular type of uh, environment, one of the things that we have to come to grips is that today the single life and the loneliness is being pushed more and more heavily and people are further and drifting away from what the family lifestyle is or coming to create a sort of unionship between people. That is something that isn't ha as heavily promoted in mainstream. You see all the alternative lifestyles, right? I'm just going to say alternative uh, to cover it all, but that particular, <laughs> but that particular <laughs> conversation between two people really building something it, it is something that it is lacking. We talk about destroying far too often, and he ain't shit, and she ain't shit, and this and that. And it's like, why are we giving so much energy to the people who are low hanging fruit and not enough to the people who are a better example? You know what I'm saying? I know we tend to kind of lean on the celebrity kind of angle but however there's a guy who's mr johnson or mr williams who's right down the street who's been married for 20 to 25 years who has a wife who has two kids who he put through college who is a proud member of his community who uh you know what i'm saying who's also an advocate there are other examples of healthy masculinity and healthy examples of people who have gone through ups and downs and have made it through i just think that people want a very fast paced kind of lifestyle and understand that that you know a flame that burns really quickly will engulf itself and it will slowly be put out so i mean that's all i got man luis been taking some good notes man go ahead brother Hink. so why would a man get married when he can find himself for himself Look, I, I, I think I, we talked about it last week, a uh, week before last, talking about coming home in a lonely, cold-ass house. Yeah, that's not what I want to do. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, and just being a, a, a person's girlfriend or boyfriend, yeah, they pretty much a free agent. And so now I'm just trying to give them a one-year contract. I'm going year to year, trying to re-up on it like a scholarship. Now, I don't, I don't want to go year to year. I'm trying to do something permanent. Now, I understand I'm taking a, 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 a penitentiary chance on a woman could sit there and say, I, I'm not happy and I'm gone. I, I, I'm, But I'm willing on taking that shot again. I'm willing on rolling the dice. I'm willing on doing it because, you know, I believe in it. And I want something, uh, you know, something stable, something, something long lasting. And so I'm going to do whatever I got to do, make sure I provide everything I need to provide. I make sure she's mentally good emotionally good and she's gonna be physically good i need to provide that for her to make sure she's right but i need to make sure she's right before i get with her before i bless her with my last night all right go ahead trev yeah so i think um what she was saying definitely does tie right into um uh, cloud jones question from the last segment because one of the main things she was explaining is how us as men really don't need women for much, right? And that's the tangibles, right? So in my opinion, I think we should come out pretty much ready, right? We should have all of our stuff in order. And I understand Bruce's point when he was saying about the leverage. And it's just, in, in all honesty, men feel a lot more comfortable when they do have the leverage. And a lot of that is because we are scared as hell of what these women are going to, if they have the leverage, right? But we know what we are trying to do. We're going to hold down a stable household. And a lot of times, men, we can't trust the women to be in a position where they can leave us. And we kind of do have to protect ourselves as men. If we're getting ready for the whole marriage thing, unfortunately, today, is to the point where you want to have a tight prenup in order. And it is, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in the 90 percentile where 
the prenups actually stand in court. So it's not like if you write a prenup, it's common for them not to stand in court. So if you get a good lawyer who knows how to write a prenup and is experienced, then you can protect yourself and make sure you're good. There's not very much you could do about the children's situation, but at least you can take care of that part of it. So if you're established on your own, then you'll be much better off. I will feel crazy if I was waiting on a woman for me to be stable, right? Because you just might not get that woman. There are some things that we do depend on women for, but it's the intangibles, right? We want affection. We do want love. We want companionship. We want a great mother for our children and all that's great. But at any point, that woman could pull that, pull a rug from underneath you, right? Finances, mixing finances with women is a scary thing, man, because women spend money different. That's another thing that you have to vet for when you're, uh, when you're considering marriage. A lot of us don't take the time to do that shit. Like we just out here, we, we looking, we like her. Oh, she got a fatty. Let me go ahead and get it. And we get ourselves in a crazy trouble. Even if we get along with the chick, that's cool. But we have to just watch how she moves. People don't talk about those credit scores when we first get into a relationship. We have to. We, I need to know how you spend your money. I need to know how much of a liability you are prior, for, prior to me actually locking in potentially for life with you. We don't have those discussions. We don't bring these things to the forefront. We just go with the flow and love and get ourselves in all kinds of shit that we don't need to be getting into. I think we have to take our time when we're selecting, when we're vetting these women, but we should also be very prepared. We should be proud as a man to be able to provide for our woman, right? A, a woman's supposed to bring that softness to your house, right? She bring that femininity to your house. Uh, but I wouldn't depend on her bringing the bacon home. That's just, that's just not how I feel about it. But um, to lose this point earlier, you do have to understand what type of man you are. And I do realize that today, it's extremely tough for a man to provide for his entire family, right? It's not common for a man's income to be able to support a family of four, right? We're talking about the averages of just under 50,000, 50, just over 50,000, depending on your gra demographic. So when you consider that, it's tough. So I dig why some men would say, you know what? Nah, it's, it's tough out here. We can get more things. We can get a bigger house. We can get more for our children. So I understand that point. But that would be scary as hell for me. It's not for me. It's not for everybody. But shout out to you if you can go through that and depend on a woman to help you bring your bacon home. It's, that's a whole nother animal. I'll leave it there for now. You know what? I, fun, I fundamentally feel like uh, society is a better place whenever you, you're able to have a stable household. Uh, provide a stable household for kids. And I think the way to do that is being married. I think marriage is an effective way to ensure that you have a stable household. And I see a lot of issues that are, uh, you know, happens in society. You can't even develop a community if you don't have any male leadership. You know, only way we can lead is we have to get women to follow us. To get women to fo follow us, we have to love them and and marry them. You know what I'm saying? Give them something to follow. So I would I would say that would be the reason why. I mean, even if I'm able to provide for myself, the reason why I would get married is to, you know, you know, bring my kids into into the world in a stable household. I don't know if anybody disagree with it. I get it, I get it, all the nuances that come with that and chances of getting divorced and breaking up, but I think the I think the risk is 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 worth the reward. If we if we given our our children a shot at having a mother and father in the household, it, it may not work. You you can't see well, these things before they happen. It, it's things that come about, but I think is, I think is, I think is a chance that's worth giving based on our you know our children. The thing, you know, the sake of the kids. Bruiser, for that point, I, I I definitely agree with that, but I feel like that's the main reason. Uh, for you to get married, uh, I don't think it's very advantageous to men if you don't plan on raising children to get married in the first place, right? Even if you're going to have a long-term partner, if that's something that you choose to do, great. But I think that the main reason for that is to have a stable household for children, right? We know the stats. We don't have to go over that whole thing and what happens if you have a dual parent household versus not. So I would say that would be the primary reason to get married is if you want to start yourself a family. 
Yeah, but I think it has an indirect let, impact. Wait, on... let, let's get some other voices, man. I, I oh, want to start it out. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. My bad. Go ahead, uh, Marcus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So, why should you get married if you can provide everything for yourself? Um. I think you shouldn't. I think you shouldn't. If you believe women are only for sex or to provide services like cooking and cleaning, then don't get married. Don't. You know, in order to 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 to, especially in this day and age where women can provide those things for yourself and, and society is it has graduated to the point where you can order food, you can order cooking and cleaning, you can order all those things. If that's the only value that you see within a woman, don't get married. Don't put that on her. Don't put that on you. Don't run yourself through that ringer. You're gonna end up getting divorced. Cause you essentially are not valuing the things that women bring to the table by doing that. Um and in in order to actually value what women do, you have to appreciate women. So you can value that that respect, that love, the honor, the um, the weight that she adds extra love into the cooking. Because the cooking might just taste the same if you don't appreciate her sacrifice. If you don't appreciate her trying to do the extra little things, like like Trev was saying, it is all intangibles, right? Uh, there's no way that I could quantify what it feel like to come in the house and see my my family smiling at me. I can't I can't quantify that. I can't put a dollar amount on that. I, it would be infinite for me if I had to try and try and find a place. There's no way when I'm listening from the other room and I hear my wife telling the kid, hey, no ice cream. And then they try and talk back and I come in. What she say? And then they no ice cream. OK. And then the smile that she have because I'm there uh, having her back. Like the, the small things in life that we can't value on on paper provide the most value intrinsically to us for our, our lifestyle um women can, rem can rem like they're different types of women the right type of woman can remove stress from you she's not a stressor those, in those intangibles huh those intangibles bro all those intangibles and when 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 you got a woman that's that's reciprocating great energy providing all those intangibles being uh being there for you in whatever facet that is to uh to clout point because some men will need um, financial assistance. The right woman will do it and won't have no issue with it for the type of woman that you you getting. Or if, if you need somebody to damn that act as your sounding board all the time, the right woman will be there listening. She will be shooting in the gym with you and she'll continue to shoot in the gym with you. And when, when you're in a position when all those things met to the beginning portion of the video, I believe you, you then start to not only want to uh, do this, but you take pride in providing uh, physical safety, financial safety, spiritual safety, because that's a part of you. You're not protecting her. You're protecting a part of you because you don't see y'all as separate no more. When you when you start moving within the right, the right uh, spiritual element or the right mind frame. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I honestly, my heart go out to anybody that cannot value women past just sex, cooking and cleaning. Cause there's so much more it's so much more in there but you got to be open to experience that so yeah if if you can just do all the things for yourself might as well start uh masturbating too just do it all knock it all out but if, if you learn how to like women and love women and want something more from them then yeah you're gonna want to get married because you're gonna want somebody with you when you're getting old you're gonna want somebody to sit on the porch with you and you laugh about uh the, the lapeep conversation how we just be saying crazy stuff sometimes you're gonna want somebody to watch love is blind with you when you're 75 and y'all just chilling and laughing at these young folks it, it it's immense but you have to appreciate women to value women i'm, I end it there. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bang most of you motherfuckers need marriage over 85% of y'all need marriage. That's the reality. Because you can't go it alone. Most of y'all can't go it alone. Unless you don't, if you want kids and you want a family and you want to be stable, most of y'all need the shit. Not just for the frilly shit that Marcus was talking about, but now you need the tangibles. Because the reality is, because most of y'all really, like, yes, can we take care of ourselves? Absolutely. But once you throw a kid or two in the mix, shit get real expensive. When you throw a house into the mix, shit get real expensive. Most of y'all 
need marriage. Tangibles, intangibles, you need the whole nine yards. You need somebody to make it from one end of life to the other end of life so that you don't wind up on the street. Because most of y'all ain't going to be, unless you unless you okay with going it alone with no kids. You don't want no legacy or unless you plan on being a bum and just getting chicks pregnant all over the place and that's your legacy is a bunch of kids that don't know who the fuck you are because you can't take care of them because they're expensive as shit. You need somebody with you. And that's for 85% of y'all. The other the, the other ones, you can you can probably make a baby, have a baby mama over there, and you can still be in the house by yourself. And you ain't got to do shit but send money over there and collect your kid every now and again, and you cool. That's because you make enough money to do that shit. The rest of y'all niggas, men and women alike, y'all don't make enough to make it to the end of life by your damn self. You're a good pitch man for marriage. I like all the window dressing and the parsley that you put on the side of it. So <laughs> you saying you need a piece of paper so that you can be stable and live a life with somebody. Well, I, under- I, 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 it, what, what, regardless of how which way you go about it, y'all need somebody. Now I get what you're well, saying as far you, as the piece wait, of paper. Wait, you didn't say that. You said we need marriage. Marriage. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I gave you an example. My aunt and my uncles, they're like a foundation to me. They never got married, but they ain't going nowhere. They have houses. They live good. Not knocking marriage. What is for you is for you. But when you come out Bible thumping and saying that this is the way and this is the only way, of then you ain't living right. Your life ain't right. Your life it can't be stable. You can't raise kids with good values and and uh, core morals and ethics. Not knocking marriage. That's when you become disingenuous. That's like them people out there. If you don't read their little pamphlet, you are going to hell. So if so, if you with somebody to the end of time, mm-hmm. why not get married? Mm, you cleave to the. I'm just asking because you saying that you don't. Well, I'm, I'm asking answer. why I not get married. You, I thought you wanted an answer. Right. Okay, so you cleave to Western, the Western civilization way of marriage that you are taught. Fair. When when before they drag this over here in shackles, what were how did how, how did the union? I can't talk start? about that because that's not what I'm a part of, and I don't so have how no can knowledge. You get up on your pulpit telling people because I know this do, side of live a good life. I'm not talking about this side of because I'm in this country okay, talking about so marriage. That means, this watch this. So that means if you don't know the origins of the thing that you Bible thumping and up on I'm your Bible, okay, allow it to. I'll give you the room. You're right, but you're you came on a biblical standpoint. I'm not Bible thumping. Okay, you gave a decree, and your decree stated that if you, you we need marriage. No, we don't. We need to be good people. You can find somebody. You need that piece of paper to validate you as a person to have a stable household. I think it's further than just a piece of paper, man. You just got to understand what it does to society. Okay. Bruiser, I made the case. The origins of marriage. You, you're standing here promoting something and you don't know how it started. I got to know how. To proof, but this, this is a whole nother episode. But you, you does do that make it. somebody... There's financial benefits to being actually married on paper. And there's financial shortfalls as well. Yes, but you're saying, you're saying, okay, you a good person and that's a good person. Y'all come together like butt cheeks. Then why not get married? You know you're going to be there. Because that's what your mental trains you to think. There are people that have been together, that died together, that have not been married. What makes your decree more powerful than their union? I didn't make that argument. I could could answer that. We need. Once you said we need, you're telling us what to do. I can answer that. If I, if, if, okay, so let me ask you this. I'm going to ask this question. 
if you got a girlfriend, y'all cohabitate. Y'all get in an argument, y'all file off on Wednesday and break up. Who's to say that she can't go out on Saturday and Sunday and bust it open? She don't owe you no obligation. She don't owe you no loyalty. No. She don't have no. your last name. Your She's not the same thing. Huh? Oh, Bruce. Oh, Bruce. That's a, a wife, that's a wife can do the same thing, but she has vows. She'd be breaking her vows. But if you what, what if difference does that make? She breaks them and and then what? And then what you gonna do about it? Nothing. You know I'm standing there. You're hold, you're held to a higher standard, and you have some skin in the game when you get but, married. But you gonna be crying. Married. You gonna be crying when she step out the same way the nigga that's not married crying. See, you're, now we're anything. talking about the result of the action. I'm I'm simply asking the question: If you have a girlfriend. Oh, is I she know not justified going. to be able to behave as a single person if y'all break up or if y'all have a falling out and say, look, fuck you and, and hang up? What, what's stopping a wife from doing the same thing is what I'm what I'm. Curious she, about. she has vows. She's married. She has to have a divorce. But but, but uh, respectfully, listen, I know a lot of wives that have made vows and, 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 and break their vows all the time, brother. So. So Again, you just like, answer the question. She has to break her vows. Oh, hold on, bro. Yeah, but, was, but, but my point is that what's the difference? Like whether she has to break a vow to do it or not, the action is the same. But it's not the same because if you're a girlfriend, you don't have to break any vows. You can move how you want. If you're a boyfriend, you can move how you want without having to break any vows or feel a relationship any is still a contract, any religious my or spiritual conviction that you're doing the wrong thing. A relationship okay. is still a contract, I'm, even though I'm it's glad you finally got not to. a girlfriend, yeah. boyfriend it's, relationship is not a contract, brother. It's still a contract. It's Bruiser. still a contract. Bruiser. If you say yes, to someone, yes, you are going to be in a relationship. You got a girlfriend. You've been in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship with a contract. Bruiser, Bruiser, that's like you know what you're saying right now, Bruiser. Bruiser. It's like saying it's like saying if if me and you shake on a business deal. That's like if me and you shake hands on a business deal. That's like you saying, well, we didn't have a deal. Yes, we. We know. don't have a deal unless I sign it. Nah. That's Brother, not true. Maybe, maybe not one holdable uh, Shannon, up that can be held in. You don't have it in black man. and white. Maybe it not, nothing, maybe not one that can be held up in. Any, anyone listening, any man Make listening, don't. If somebody that, shake your hand and say we got a business deal, any young man listening that might not even be hip, listen, don't believe that shit. You have any, a any real man, man any real right. man shake Bruce, shake let hands let me, and me, look at each other eye. That's a Bruce, deal. I don't know what world you living in, but any real man. That shake hands on a deal, that's it's in stone, brother. That don't got to with you being a real man. That got you something to do with you being a fool if you shaking hand and making business deals. Okay, you know how many business deals get tossed out because it was just over a handshake, and all the other person got to say is, I didn't give a, I didn't know I was going to do Contracts have been breached. It don't make a difference. Somebody going to do you grimy in business, they're going to do you grimy in business, whether you got a contract. I don't want to get too far off the path. I knew Bruiser would go biblical. Now, if you had a Nigerian man up there who adhered to his customs as for how he went about his unions, he would conflict with how you see your Western ways. I don't but disagree. You would tell him he is wrong. I'm not arguing that. No, you are because you're no, basing, allow me to finish and you can respond. You're basing your views on. Your beliefs. Oh, no. I'm basing my views off of where I live at. I'm basing my views off of the law of the land. Okay, I'm going to try again. The society I live biblical in. biblical into it. Did you or did you not? No, I I did, but that doesn't. That's not the whole premise. Well, how of you gonna say point. no and say yes? I mentioned. I mentioned a respect. I mentioned spiritual conviction. In that, that is the binding thing that you're making an yeah, argument. That's not my for. sole premise. This is one right of the points I made within my premises, grounded. and you're trying to make it holistic to that. It's not holistic to that, brother. You are making it biblically bound. You're saying you're breaking. I never quoted the scripture. I never you're said a Quran. Okay. I never said a Bible. None of that. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna do the the word semantics. What vow am I breaking? How do I take that vow under what? You can, you can take a vow under the state. You, and take a vow. A vow. you don't have to be under okay. a, a, a specific denomination. Okay, Sweeney, we can do this game. All of us can hold hands and do the Texas two-step. Do they not present a Bible once you're making your vow? This ain't shit. I got married through the courthouse. I got to think. Okay, we're going to do this. You see what we're doing you now. You can go to the courthouse and get a marriage license without making okay, any vows. When, when you say your vows and you 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 stand across from that one I that did. you're marrying, 
What did they read off? Did, did you say Trey? No, I said I, I did. I, I did mine off of the Bible. You no, I'm off of the Bible. That's I can't speak for everybody. I can't speak for everybody. Sweeney, did you do yours but, off the Bible? Me, I, me, I can say, I can remember during the ceremony we, during the ceremony we did, but they we had a courthouse a wedding beforehand. Yeah. I don't remember there being right, a Bible. So you, you just uh, said yes. square the circle with Bruiser, Wait, no, you, the you missed you missed the second half of what I said. I said Better. during our ceremony, yes, but I don't remember a Bible being present or, or swearing on a Bible when we got married through the courthouse because that's how we got married. We got married through the courthouse. Where'd your vows come from? Off of the auspices of what? Whatever the courthouse said in the state of Texas. Why are we doing this, oh Trev? Why are we doing you this? Said, because that's what it was. Better, I'm part, say better or worse, whatever y'all said, y'all know good and damn well what the man is saying. The vows y'all said when y'all look each other in the face at the altar came from, from, from scripture. We came like, from the Bible, yeah. I, well, that's what I said. You didn't put your hand <laughs> on the Bible. You didn't and put your hand on 48 laws of power. You put your hand on the Bible. Like, why are we doing this? Come on, we grown men here. Let's stop it. And that's when you came in and said, 85% of y'all need to get married. Well, <laughs> not. To, to make the argument, because you, you, I was trying to help out Bruiser. First of all, one of the first lines of protection for a father, for a father, when you're talking about uh, parental rights, is marriage. Because when you have a child outside of marriage, there's a whole lot of other shit you got to do to try to get your rights. Whereas when you're within a marriage, there are certain protections that you automatically have. That's one tangible way. There's another one. This is the direction I thought Bruiser was going in. Yo, woman, if you got a girlfriend and you break up with her and she just walks through the house and starts snatching shit up out the house and saying, well, I bought, have, I bought this, I bought that. And you like, no, the fuck you didn't. And she leaves out the house with that shit. You can't go and be like, well, I bought that shit. And then you ain't got no receipt to prove it. However, Sweeney. however, Sweeney. underneath Sweeney. a, however, Sweeney. underneath a marriage, Sweeney. underneath a marriage, especially in the state of Sweeney. Texas, they will tell you, you got to bust that shit down and split it. You okay, get your on. shit. So Sorry, wait, brother, Sweeney, am, am, am I off? Is there a term called common law? And most states don't don't don't. Oh, no, 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 no. Only, it's like it's only seven, states, only seven yeah. states. Yeah. Only seven states, states still California. recognize that. And okay, most of those states are flyover states. Different. No, I'm talking Sweeney. to exactly what he's saying right there. No, but now if, what you're, he's if saying, you coexist Kenny, with somebody, Kenny, the, what he's saying is that Sweeney, if somebody has residency established at that house, it will still be the same laws in court, whether right. she's married to you or not. If she gets mail there, she can still snatch your shit. Exactly. Listen, let me let me let me let me throw this out because I know we're getting late. It's 10, 12, and we ain't even done yet, fellas. Let's, let me let me let me just throw my point in. The woman on the video, you know, she was talking about women pull back their love and affection and their nurturing. And the discussion that you guys was having earlier, I had I wanted to you guys was wondering, like, well, you know, men work and women work, and she puts in this and who builds the plane and all this other kind of stuff, and who's the co-pilot and who's the mechanic. And if you want a statistic to quantify this discussion, just look at alimony. You know, women pay 3% of alimony. That's the statistic to look at to figure out uh, who's putting in what and who's shooting in the gym. If out of 100 people, only three women are paying alimony, that tells you who's shooting in the gym even today. So the reality is men do the work. You brothers do the work, man. I know we want to give a lot of women the credit because they're there for the intangibles that Hink was talking about, that that uh, Marcus was talking about. But men bust the lion's share of the hard work. And now, clout, problem. clout, here's the thing. You want to know why you want your plane built first? I know I, I understand where you because you was real passionate earlier. You know, you was upset almost. I uh, felt like you was upset. Like, you know, like, why are we if we uh, who's the helpmate? You know, do men have the helpmate or is women? I mean, are women the helpmate to men or vice versa? Because if what you're doing, you need her to help you build and create this. If especially don't you why you want her, why you want to come with it already built? You want somebody that's going to hand you the wrench. So. From an older brother. Speak it to anybody under 51 years old. You want. 
to have your plane built because if you ever get it taken from you, you can build another one. One of the things that destroy men the hardest in divorces is the man that built his plane with somebody. She took half that she took the left wing and everything on the left side of the plane and he can't build it anymore. This is what this is what uh what Trev was talking about. If you sit around and you from the day one, you building this together and you guys are working together and you getting it together. Women have fail safes when shit don't go their way or the, or the relationship don't work out for them. They have cushions to fall back on. They don't go homeless like we do. When you have somebody, when you building that plane with somebody and she decides to flip out or you become a fucking horn dog and you out there cheating on her, for whatever reason, rips that, rips that plane in half, she could take half a plane and she's good. In fact, she'll go find another pilot somewhere. You might not find that. Next thing you know, you are destroyed. But let me tell you, if you build that plane first, Clout, you got a new clothing line coming out. I see. I, I see. I, I'm, you know, I'm buying, I'm buying everything that you're selling the day you drop it <laughs> if you build that brand and have it where you put it together and it's stable because remember we was talking about stability you was talking about you need a woman for stability no i want you to become stable with that clothing brand all alone so in the event you bring somebody in and they take half your clothing line you will be have you will have no problem building another one all right so so i hear what you're saying shannon and, that, and that's Let a great finish. point right let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna let y'all go because y'all y'all been talking a lot tonight. Then Marcus and my man Darwin and Sweeney, you guys was talking about the, you know, you need marriage. You know, uh Sweeney, you was 85% of y'all need marriage. You know, the, you know, you need it because you need the stability. You need, you know what? I understand where you're going from. And then I think you cleaned it up. You said, Well, I was really kind of talking about relationship. So, but the point is. And even with what Marcus was saying, because Marcus was talking about the intangibles of a woman. If you don't if you don't appreciate what a woman brings to a relationship, then don't get one. If you think it's just fucking cooking and cleaning, you don't need one. This is what Hink was talking about. But I think the argument, Marcus, is modern legal marriage. Do you need that to get that? The argument today is not necessarily. Marriage isn't needed for most of the things that you describe, Marcus, those intangibles. You can have an uncle and an aunt like Kenny P has and rock out for 53 years buying property, raising nieces and nephews and doing the whole thing without that legal part. And the reason why the legal part is really fucked up today, because here's what's ruined marriage. No fault divorce. You see, when there was a consequence for fucking up in your marriage, people didn't get divorces. When you knew that you could lose everything because you was fucking your secretary, then yeah, that was going to you, you you thought twice before you fucked your secretary. If a woman knew that she wouldn't get a goddamn penny if she was fucking the, the, the pool boy, she'd think twice about fucking him. But now you don't have to you don't even need to get a court of reason. You can just tell him I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't have to tell you what I did. In fact, what I did has no bearing on how much money I'm going to get in alimony. And that is fucked up. And that's what the argument is on modern legal marriage, as opposed to what Sweeney was saying is rocking out with somebody that you could lock in with. And so, as the lady said, love, affection, and nurturing, I'm with Hink, man, because I believe that love, affection, and nurturing is the fuel that men need from women. What's so upsetting, though, is that that's all men are asking for. And we seem like we still can't get that. I ain't asking you to get out there and dig the ditch with me. I ain't asking you to replace the roof. You don't got to lift no fucking washing machine. And you don't got to change the oil. You don't got to do all this hard shit. Can you love me? Give me some affection and nurture the family. Is that so hard? Are we asking too much for that? Can we get some loyalty around this bitch? Can you put some clothes on? Can you represent the family properly? Can you not talk back to me based on everything that I'm contributing to this motherfucker? God damn. And because no fault divorce and the modern laws and what Lewis talked about earlier on how we've already civilized the entire fucking world. 
women are taking advantage of that shit and saying, well, fuck, I don't got to. And there ain't nothing. And like, and like Clout said just now, and there ain't nothing you can do. Because whether I'm your girlfriend or your wife, I could go fuck somebody at the club this Saturday. And the outcomes is no different than wife or girlfriend. And that's what's fucked up. And that is why it's a really hard thing to sell marriage as it is today versus just rocking out with somebody lifelong and making a commitment to each other. Because if you really care about each other, the paperwork don't fucking matter. But I'll leave it at that. And tonight, I bid you brothers adieu. All right. I think everything um, Shannon said, um, made some. he made some great points. But um, I just wanted to add some nuance into it. Um, I think women are like great investors, right? Like women are like, like their strategy when it comes to dating is often an investment. And I find that women are loyal to things that they've, that have required them to sacrifice. I think a lot of the reason why so many men are, are like, they're trying to find leverage through having their shit together, but not realizing that that's not actually leverage. That's actually a vulnerability because when a woman hasn't had the sacrifice to, to, to invest in you at a low point, she's going to cash out at the highest point. And if she didn't have to invest at a low point, she's just going to leave with what she can get. There's no reason why she's going to stick around and be loyal to you. But a woman that's built with you from the ground up has no reason to leave because she has skin in the game. If you if you pay attention to the type of jobs women keep, the type of things women do, the type of friendships women keep, it's usually the thing that is required the most from them. That's what keeps women loyal. So if y'all are wondering why so many women are not, uh, when we're asking for love and affection and, and they're not willing to give, give that, you want to know why? Because that's not enough to make them feel purposeful. Giving you a little bit of love and affection doesn't make them feel purposeful. Working directly to help you succeed makes a woman feel purposeful. If a woman knows that you're trying to be a fashion designer and you have her in there cutting fabric with you and you have her in there coming up with marketing plans with you, guarantee you that woman's not going anywhere because she has a purpose it's the woman who's sitting around watching you cut the fabrics and watching you get the money that's gonna be like oh great when this takes off i'm gonna get what get in where i fit in and i'm gonna take what i can and be on my way but a woman who has skin in the game who has actually sacrificed to be where she is is not gonna give up her own hard work and sacrifice that she put in i've rarely seen women do that Women usually leave situations and are disloyal to situations where they did not have to invest. So that's kind of my point. My point is like we, we continue to frame relationships with women as though we're just supposed to have it all together and give it all to them. No, you give her purpose, your provision, like provision. We always make it seem like it's money. Provision is exactly what the word is broken down to. Provision, foresight. You share your vision with her. And she works to help your vision come to life and manifest it in the real world. If she cannot help you manifest your vision in the real world, she's not going to be loyal to you. She's not. If you want a woman to be loyal to you, then you have to give her a position. You have to give her something to do in your life. That is what's going to make a woman loyal to you. So to me, I'm completely against the idea of you need to be stable because, because again, stability doesn't require a woman to sacrifice. And if a woman does not have to sacrifice, she's not going to be loyal. Having a situation that's somewhat unstable is fine because that's what a good woman is there to do, to help you, to help you get things more stable. Okay, you start in your business and you only got one branch. Guess what? That woman in your life is going to help you expand to two, three, four branches. But the woman who's helped you expand from no branches to four branches is going to stick around while the woman who can uh, uh, to to Klaus to Klaus point, I'm a living example of what he's saying. When I say eighty five percent of y'all need it, is because I am a part of it. I'm a living example of my wife has just as much skin in it as I do. Me and her got this house together. Her money was just as needed as my money was. I'm a regular ass barber. She's a regular ass hairstylist. She don't want to lose this house no more than I do. It hurts me just as much as it hurts her. So we have to bust this shit down the middle. We have to split this shit up. We both lost the house. We both lose out on having our kids there full time. We both lose out. Like I'm literally the example of what he's talking about where she's built everything with me. She's with, 
She's been with me since I've been a broke ass college student. No money. See, so, me and her. City, are you, you know what's funny about that, Sweeney? That go with that different. statistic that's where they say that the majority of marriages that cost under a thousand dollars are the longest lasting marriages, and the marriages where they spend over thirty k on the wedding, those are the uh, the fastest divorce. Five thousand dollars on our wedding. I think we messing up by putting um putting that part of it into it, right? Because it, it's not determined on the actual finances for me, right? I don't think I don't think so. Like she, she just got to rock with you. Like so you could be, you could come into the situation with a bunch of money and she could, she could be gone, but you could be broke and she could be going just the same way. So your main thing is, I'm not saying that you need to have it ready just for the woman, just so you can put everything on it. I, that's just my style, right? I just, I don't depend on women for that part of it. I depend on women for different things, right? Like we were talking about before the intangibles, that's fine. If you felt like that, that's cool. Just don't lead with your wallet. That would be the stupidest shit you could do in your life. Don't ever lead with your wallet. Don't ever think that you're going to get the woman because of the money. That's crazy right. because that means she's there for the money. And, and then her yep. ultimate goal is to leave with as much of the money as possible. And we have to understand that. I don't want anybody to get that misconstrued because that's crazy. I always <laughs> talk against that. I speak against that all the time. Leading with your wallet is crazy. Don't ever do that, gentlemen. On any capacity, never leave with your damn wallet. You're going to lose. However, I still think you should be prepared on your own, just as a man. Getting Whether you're going to get married or not, you should just be able, you shouldn't rely on a female for that part of it, right? That's that's how I was trying to explain it. Like, I don't think that that should be part of it. I mean, but every man can live by himself on his own. I don't think any man need. most men don't need a woman to survive. But most men don't need a woman to survive. You can you can live, but when you're talking about a full family and making it to the other end of life in this in this country in this economy, that's nearly impossible. So you just made a beautiful case for a woman that loves you. That both y'all got it through the mud and work for what y'all have. Which part of being married? dictated the work that y'all put in well i didn't uh, i mean shane said i cleaned it up a little bit i believe i believe in marriage so that's i was when i said marriage i really meant you need somebody with you so i get what you, i no, no 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 i got what you're saying i'm not disagreeing with what you said you saying you don't need marriage for that fair i just believe in marriage so it is what it is with me that's why i just led with that but in here let's meet that that's where we have the crossroads. You saw it works for you, but here's the here's the part that where you went left when you say to other people what they need, because other people are running their race. So what what about what I said? Go you ahead. are dictating to other people what that they, they need, need in their life. That they need a relationship for. Oh, no, you said eighty-five just... percent. I'm, need I'm gonna... somebody, right? I said Shannon cleaned it up for me, right? Okay, so that's the, that's the only sticking point. So and while you still to it, I already you. conceded that I said most people need somebody to make it from one end of life to the other. Shannon cleaned it up for me. Okay, not not focusing on you, just focusing on the conversation. Is no ad hominem attacks towards no, you. I get, no, I'm talking about I literally cleaned up that to where we don't have to stick on the marriage part anymore because I've already accepted that no, you don't need some you don't need marriage for that. I concede. KP, are you uh religious or no? I grew up uh uh back uh Christian. I, okay, cool. I well, have let me my ask you this. on it. I believe no, nah, I'm gonna be I, I believe in a higher power, but over my learning, Dr. Henry Clark and other great scholars, mm -hmm. I believe like stories are mistold, but I still hold faith yeah. in that through my studies and I hold faith in a higher being. But you can't gotcha. tell me if, you know, certain other people translate it and then they change books down time that I'm it's supposed to adhere to. Lost in translation, right? Understood. Yeah. Understood. Other people that don't well, share my skin I wanted skin to ask color, you. All right. So I had I had a different type of question. I just wanted to ask you 
um how do you feel and let's not, let's take the paperwork out of it like just maybe the sanctity of marriage right not even not the government involved i mean like you go ahead you have your own ceremony where it's like the original agreement between you your spouse and god um would you are you um against something like that which would hold no weight in court per se but or would you be against that also or would no, you just say because I, I know i know marriage I is a dangerous it. thing Okay. I wouldn't be against so that's just the paperwork. Make, the, I said it's a contract. The 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 agreement that you have between two to love each other for the rest of your life that can be made between two. You don't need no government in it. Yeah. No, and I believe that too. The government involvement is something that's scary as hell for men because it's not advantageous. There's very little that we would do as far as a business decision to uh, jeopardize our finances. If you know it's a fifty percent chance of failure, it's crazy. So we, it's it's a, it's a scary thought to as men to be like, damn, I'm about to put it all on the line, and you're watching a lot of people fail on it. I did it right, but I, I still wouldn't tell. I advise people to uh, do some form of commitment, whether it be marriage, even if you don't want to do the paperwork. I understand there are advantages and disadvantages. Weigh your options, vet properly. Um, but my main thing is. The main reason I say that is just for the kids' sake, right? Just because of what we were kind of talking about earlier with having a dual parent household. And that doesn't necessarily look like government involvement. So I could understand that part without um, tying your finances up totally. If you if you were scared as hell like a lot of men right now because you're watching these other men drop like vibes, you're watching what's going on in these courts and you're watching women getting away with cheating on people and having no consequences whatsoever all that is scary as hell for for men out here and we and we watch women you know put the representative out there for you to meet and marry and then now you meet the real her and you're doomed right okay. so that that happens and that's a lot of men because we a lot of men we don't understand sometimes how difficult it is for the average person like a lot of us that get on the panels and stuff like that we can sit here we vet we study this. This is a lot of work that we put in to do this. The average man today is not thinking about this. They just trying to get by. They trying to get theirs. They working on a career. They doing different things. They want a family, but they're not trying to make it a damn skill set. It's not supposed to be a skill set. That's not what love is supposed to be like. I'm supposed to find a person that I appreciate, go into the situation in good faith and not worry what the fuck they're trying to do to me. It shouldn't be tactics and game and all of this nonsense. It's trash. That's trash. And a lot of men going into those situations going with good faith and they um mm -hmm. and, it, and they don't have a good outcome and it's terrible so hey, that's Trim. that's a problem for me what's up i got a question for you. if you were the woman right let's take the contract mm -hmm. out of it you were the woman okay you marry her y'all grind it out y'all buy a house together okay no contract it don't work out who keeps the house it splits it splits you split the without, without a contract, right? Yeah, the house does. But she won't get alimony. I won't be paying her for the rest of my life. Listen, <laughs> those no. contracts. No. Checkmate. <laughs> yeah or no. Yeah or no. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's no, no, that part. Don't, you know that don't part. She's not going to have my 401k, my 401k, my pension, right? All that. What? That's going too. You realize that, right? Your pension, your 401k, your everything, your whole life, your savings that right. you built with All right, let's, let's assume she makes the same as I, let's God. say she makes the same amount of money as you. And it's and it's still this entitled. Marriage. Still entitled. You to not. Piece of your pension. What are you talking about? Well, no, she'll be entitled to a piece of your pension, but that will be in the state. All right, let's just talk about the state of Texas. The state of Texas, okay. everything you acquire within the marriage is half theirs. So, I mean, yeah. so, so, so oh, that's yeah. a good contract for me. If the woman, no, if you, what, what, that's what I'm asking though. If you acquire all this stuff within a marriage with a woman that grinds out with you, you're going to then say, all right, you're not going to bust it all down the middle. You said I bust this part down the middle that I, that we acquire, but I'm not going to give you this part of also, which it, your retirement is also a part of her retirement. Okay. You know what you're doing? You're only staying on one side of the coin. No, well, it's both sides. If you are a man and you and you're building up your retirement, is supposed to take care of both of y'all, right? Your retirement, your four hundred one k is supposed to take supposed care of both to. of y'all. That's what yes. you've been building it up for. Marriage yeah. breaks down; now, it ends. 
but yeah, but then that's the money part. So if we split, she's supposed to be nurturing me for the rest of my life, but she does not responsible for all, all her responsibilities are relinquished at that point. She gets to relinquish every bit of her responsibility, anything. When I wanted my head in the morning, gone. When I wanted somebody to make me a sandwich, gone. Everything that she would have had to do, Hence Go the on. reason why Klaus still said, have to pay, but I still have to pay the reason for it. why Klaus you know said saying? your ass better be shooting in a gym too. That's my point. As no, long as she that doesn't help. You, that doesn't. Does, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. That doesn't help because and you build a four hundred one k. Both of y'all got to split y'all four hundred one k. Okay, so if she puts God, out, whatever money she makes, you gotta, money whatever money you make, you got to split it. <laughs> That's why you gotta be in the gym shooting. Hey, but it, are you there? No, that didn't make your point, Sweeney. It no. made my point that no, you should probably not tie yourselves up financially and, and do marriage. Go ahead and do your marriage. Go ahead and get your agreement prior no, to I, it. I Don't I tie you, up your finances. No, when you, if, when you clean, I'm cl clean and clear too. What I ask is, is if both of y'all put the same shit in and y'all split up. There's no harm, no foul in splitting everything. That's nearly impossible. Shannon just gave the, the stats on it. Men are doing 97% of the alimony. So of them, women pretty much are not was, putting in the same that's, thing. That's part of based on an old way to how people used to move. Marriage so, is not a good faith agreement. It has no percentage now then. Today, you, think, you think people, you think men are paying alimony in a situation where they're making literally damn near 5,000 apart? You're trying to find happen. an anomaly to fit your uh, speaking point. <laughs> Women, okay, fair. Women are hypergamous, right? I'm not talking about mm -hmm. a scenario in which the woman is hypergamous and she got a man that out earns her. I'm talking about a scenario. That's almost always. How many? How many situations is? I mean, right, so there are some. That? That's most marriages <laughs> today. <laughs> That's most marriages today. Most motherfuckers who get married today are both putting in. You can uh, where are your stats? I put I pull up that chart. I think he put some up. Some, I pull I up that chart up every single day. Every <laughs> single day. Wait, I've yet to see. Yeah, I know you leave your your novels is like war and peace. I read them. Hold on. But I didn't see the stat where you said it was 50-50. Wait a minute. I pull up this chart every single week. We because you work. know for a fact it ain't 50-50 if she take you to to the I'll courthouse. This chart every single week, week in and week out. Okay, is it 50 50? All right, guys, I got to call it a night. All right, good one. All right, clap. Don't deal with a gold digger. Deal with somebody that got the skin in the game. It's not that hard. <laughs> you really said that? Pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> we sitting over here. Y'all want to? If, if you want, I'll put it like this: If you want to go the route that Bruiser said, and y'all want to go this route, fair is fair. Then that's the risk you run of it. Okay, because you need so, the leverage. Because Trev actually said it. No, I think uh, Clout actually said it. That actually sets you up for weakness. If you go in and say, "I have to do it all on my own before she comes in." You that's literally the risk you run of marrying a woman that when you already have it, you're gonna lose half your shit if it okay. doesn't work out. Look how you destroy your point. How, how many women from the beginning of this night? How many women are gonna start with you if they don't see you already established like the first time? Let's um, ladies, how many of y'all let, let's just ask the chat? There's a bunch of women in the chat. Ladies, how many of y'all are women gonna take a man? They're gonna hold on. Let me let, let me get out. They're gonna you had the Reverend Pastor, Mr. Slick, talking, and he says, a man that's financially, physically, and spiritually together. Now, that's when Clout jumped in and said, you know, some other stuff, but then he got to the point where, like, I want you, like you said, shooting in the gym with me. If a woman come and meet you today, suppose you had, like, something happen in your life, you lost your house, this, you starting from scratch, you got ambition, you're trying to build back up. And she meets you right there. How many women is like, oh, he's a project. You think they're going to mess with you if those standards that you put forth were set? If you're talking about a woman that comes in to a guy that makes $50,000 a year and she makes forty six, which is damn near the average for most of these people out here, I don't think we're going to see too many problems out of that situation.
because you just put a stat that favored what you're saying rather than what I just but gave. Most, that's what most people are doing. Most people, that's what most people are doing. We, okay, the numbers, are, the numbers say, speak for themselves. Let's not say people, let's say women. Most women are aiming for the 50, the guy that makes 50,000 nowadays. And how much is she making? No, I'm asking you. That was my question. Most women are aiming high for the guy that makes the median, which is 50, 55,000. That's what most women are aiming for nowadays. Yes or no? I don't think most women have a choice. Mr. Statman, why you won't answer it? You put up a stat like that before. Because <laughs> most of them don't have a choice. You can make it. You know? you know? yeah. you be, you yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Ain't no one. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. I, I, just, I, just, I just reduced it. Come on, Sweeney. Okay. Come on, Sweeney. We spoke about this before. Sweeney, women, can aim, women can sit back and make demands today. Right right the question here? was, okay, I'm going to ask Marcus. <laughs> Those women are aiming for guys that make 50000 a year? The average woman? Aiming, no. Will they settle for him? Yes. Okay, I I said aiming, so you could, yeah. Aiming, no. Okay, thank you. So what does that prove? They still gotta. They still fall in line somewhere. They can't get the dude out there because you can't get them. There ain't enough of them. Eventually, they have to fall in line and settle. And this is, goes back to okay. Let's get let's get it in order. Bruiser made a good point. Man needs to be established. That should be within that man to, to pr have a presentation for the woman that he's going to cleave to. Okay, got it. You made a case for, okay, these are the standards. She got to be in there shooting with the gym, shooting in the gym with you, which I agree in part. But the, the expectations of what you say is not realistic with the common woman today if you lined up 10. Okay. Hi guys. Hi. What's yeah. up, brother? The thing is this, right? Exactly. I know somebody will um um Kenny was saying something about uh marriage and uh the the reason why we shouldn't get married and also uh uh what um, um I forgot his name, the other guy that just left. Cloud. Well yeah, Cloud was saying something about that you have to build that you have to build with her. Okay, throughout history, uh, there is a reason why for the past 230,000 years, almost 350,000 years, that marriage has always worked the way it worked until the Western experiment. The Western experiment came and destroyed marriage, which we all understood. And that is that has been about 150 years old. I would say 75 to 150 years, depending on who you're talking to. But what marriage says or uh, the prospect of marriage says is that it's not that you should build and well established you have to have the basic necessity you have to have a house not that you have to have a 10,000 square foot 5,000 square foot but you have to have a roof over your head you have to have basic necessity that you know, that life gives before you bring a woman into it the reason why is because a woman has a short temper she doesn't have endurance. Men have endurance. A man can literally live under the bridge and survive and never worry. But when a woman walks into your house, she seeks security. If you don't have, if you don't have that uh, protection over her head, it gets to a time she becomes frustrated. And when she's frustrated, she begins to say something. <laughs> When she's frustrated, she begins to say something. And then that in itself will frustrate you as a man. So the last thing you want to do is to have under the basic. Because under the basic will destroy your family. And then when it comes to uh, alimony, right? Only about 20% of men in the United States are qualified to pay alimony. Of that, of that 20%, only 3% of women pay alimony. Not that every woman that divorces a man out there gets alimony. No, they don't. They don't get it. 
They never, they, yeah. the husbands don't even have what it takes to pay that. That's number one. But I, what I got to say about marriage, Kenny, in, in, um, you don't have to do the certificate of marriage. I think most men should stop doing that. Like going to court and get married, married in court, we should stop doing that. There are other religious marriage that doesn't give you that certificate. But I don't think it's of a justice to a woman to marry her without any kind of uh, any kind of ritual or any kind of ceremony. There has to be a ceremony because that ceremony is what actually gives her honor. The honor she derives of marriage is the ceremony that happens. But you don't have to go to court to do that. You don't have to get certificate to do that. Like I do say to people, marriage is not a contract. Marriage is actually um, a union between two people. Contract has an expiration date. Marriage does not have an expiration date. Um, but you can't give a handshake either because um, uh, MOU is not a contract. Marriage is not an MOU. They are all two, two different things. But the ceremony, like in Africa, just like you asked, you, that's like you said, Kenny. In Africa, we do have ceremonies that happen, and there is no paperwork signed. There is no paperwork. It's a ceremony that happens between the two um, um, households, and they come there together to do exchange of vows, whereby the daughter and the offsprings are protected. But this ceremony of signing something is been introduced for the past since the Christian church came and it totally destroyed the family. And this is what I brought up to them. Do you know the origins of the things you up here fighting, <laughs> you know, professing? It, it doesn't matter. Nah, that's ignorance then. Well, you gotta let me finish what I was saying. If, you, if someone can give you a chronological order of where something came from and you say that, that means you're being ignorant. No, well, let me finish what I was saying. It doesn't matter if we know the origins of marriage because it don't hold any weight in the state, in society, according to these laws. In whose society? Right? It, I'm saying I can go have a ceremony and say I'm married, but so, to the courts and to the state, they don't mean shit. You so, got to have a marriage contract. So yeah, I had to provide a certificate a in order to license in the United States. I so I get it. It's okay to embrace the originality of our culture and our heritage as a people, but it don't make it. It don't hold weight. I, I I can give two shits about it. Okay, that's your personal feelings. Shannon gave you a feelings. whole break. Okay, that's the law. That's, no, that's your personal feelings. You said I don't give a shit about it. I, the reason I'm why I don't is said. because it don't hold any weight. Shannon it gave you a whole breakdown over here in 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 the so state. Wait. So wait, you was on mute when Shannon was talking. Hmm. You was on mute when Shannon was talking and breaking down, breaking down his uh, <laughs> what he heard and your thoughts are your thoughts. Like I said, Sweeney and you. I can respect that if that's the thing that you want to do. You can't tell me that if I have certain standards, I've researched it and I looked in it, the African brother came up here and verified the things that I've studied and learned. He also verified what Trev said when Trev asked me, okay, are you open to having a union? And I said, yeah, I'm open to doing it that way. Because I know from where we came from, there was no paperwork. But you're up here saying that that, that don't matter. I'm not listen. Whatever way, it. whatever standard or principle, philosophy you believe or whatever, from where you came from, I'm not knocking that. I'm not dis make being. I'm not trying to be disingenuous to that. I'm just saying here in the states, it doesn't matter. So you have to have a marriage license in order for you to be recognized as a married couple. Okay, bye. So actually, um, Kenny, before you go on that, let me say, in America, right, actually, that is not a uh, bruiser. That is not really correct. Um, in America, you don't really need a, a certificate to be recognized. In fact, Nigerians do do marriage in Nigeria and come here without the without the Western marriage and still be recognized. No, well, and, talking they, about, they might be well, able to self is this, and identify. Huh? So it can, it can, it real, real quick, just a real quick caveat. So in order for me to get my wife on my insurance to have to give birth to my child and be 
under the same health care, I had to provide HR with the actual certificate. They didn't recognize anything other than that. Mm -mm. That is the, the only way uh, that you know. That's that is one. To, yeah, you know. it's not. Yeah, you but we that you. came from there will I tell you that. That information is not the case. I know, Marcus, um, you're, good, you're good at researching information. And this is yeah. a teachable moment right now. So, Kenny, okay. real quick. Today's time in today's time, only 55% of marriages are men primary are the primary or sole provider of the household. 29% of them are egalitarian, which means that the woman makes the same amount of, if not uh, the same amount as the man, and about roughly 16% of it, the woman is also is the breadwinner or the primary. So, and that's down from 85%. 50 years ago. So yes, marriages are far more e equal today than they once were. Okay, we never argued that point. But no, well we well you made the point of saying you asked me well what percentage of women are are actually doing that and I will say that it's a significant amount of them at this point. Are checking for the guy that makes 50, 60,000. It's a significant amount of them now because the average and uh, the median income for those egalitarian relationships are 100 to 120,000. Okay, here's the thing. Marcus no. followed that up. The initially, they say no, but they settle. So, what? we were in agreement. What, is that, what does that matter? Sweeney, Sweeney, there is something I want to say to you, Sweeney. You see that statistic that you just quote right now is not correct. I'll tell you why it's not correct. What the hell is it? Is it no. No, the reason why it's not correct is that that's stated. It's stated, but that's not actuality. It's just stated. It's not actuality. I'll tell you why. Oh, In some household, oh, no, Sweeney, I'm not trying to die. I'm, I'm, I'm disagree <laughs> with you, but but I just said that the statistic, not you. You are correct, but the statistics is not correct. I'll tell you why. Because in some household, actually, men out and women by far. Okay, now you're talking about exceptions. But due to he arguing the exception. <laughs> I told you earlier we were doing that whenever we were doing the same thing. Women, meaning you was making exceptions and moving the goal. Forty-five percent is not an exception, Sweeney. It's not that's even an like exception now. You were doing okay, that. Let me tell you why it's not an exception. Forty-five yeah, percent is an exception. Let me tell you why it's not an exception. Let me tell you why it's not an exception. Let's just go back to Nigerian community in America, right? Most Nigerian men in America far out end their women, right? We're not talking but, about y'all. Y'all marriages ain't even counted. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Now, uh, why is it not county if we're in America, man? Yeah, they were. <laughs> this standard that I'm quoting only, quote, only counts the marriages in this country. Your marriage ain't even county. Sweeney, go outside and cook some ribs. <laughs> you just, you, I don't know. What you doing right now? Hold on. I, I Listen, I get saying go fuck yourself, but go outside and cook some ribs? That's a new one. Nah, you, you he know what I'm talking about. He know what I'm talking about. So can I ask a keen a question? I, I I know and 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 I heard what uh, Marcus said. Like he needed to provide that um that paperwork to do the insurance, but running a company, he didn't have to uh to get the insurance the, the, to provide your marriage. Rarely does it, rarely is your marriage certificate required to do anything in America outside of a court of law. Um, even yeah. including and up to life insurance, because you can give I can give life insurance. Some people give life insurance to their dog. I can have my beneficiary be my next door neighbor. There's a lot marriage oh. certificates aren't necessarily required for pretty much anything, including mm -hmm. health insurance. So I just nope. want to throw that out there. So I don't, want, I don't want us to get I don't want us to get it mixed up thinking that it's required. Go ahead. In order for me to add my wife pre-child, so the child can get added to the insurance, but pre, mm -hmm. so she can go get the pregnancy and all that stuff done, I had to provide her certificate before they would no, add her to it. They would have did it anyway, though. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I, I tried, I, I and they said no. They needed a certificate. I, I, it was like a thing with HR. I had to send it back. That's because, because depends, you were claiming that I, that's because that's because you stated that you stated to them that you that's were married. Your marriage. Yeah. If if you would have said I'm not married and I'm in a common relation, I'm in a common law relationship, or I, I'm in a I'm in a uh, uh, exactly because that's the that's, my mind, they would have still did it. That's right? that's, that's the privilege. Mm -hmm. Watch this real quick. I give it back to you, Shannon. That's the privilege given to the same sex couples. It's an American thing. That's a yeah. You got the same sex. It's, it's, an, it's an American thing, Marcus. That's all I'm saying. I just, just 
I, 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 I ran a Sears. I had 175 employees in front of me. Trust me, anybody could have came in and said anything they fucking wanted, and we would have still had to give it to them. And that's just the way the that's the way the corporations work in America. I went to talk to the HR lady about this. Well. Yeah, talk to HR about it. But well, she knows that you're married, and you probably come to work with a ring on. And it's just no. a lot of now. I, I will tell you this: streamlining and easy marriage. Hey, I'm married. Here's a certificate. It is at that point. There's really no questions. But even if you provided, you could have printed your own marriage certificate. You know that? You they you didn't have to have a purple seal. You could have printed your own marriage certificate and gave it to HR, and that would have worked. HR cannot say, "Oh, this is not authentic." Come back. No, and no, that's possible. That, yeah, that's possible. I don't that, think they had a way to verify point. it. That's why I'm but they needed me on record. I could have got yeah. charged insurance fraud if I did that too, though. Yeah, a lot that. of a lot of it. A lot of it is just is just is just bullshit. But Akeen had asked him. He said, "You know, marriage isn't. Uh, uh, they aren't MOU. Like so, he uh, a memorandum of of uh, understanding. That's what an MOU is." A memorandum of understanding. And he said marriages are not an MOU. And, and I wish he was here because that's where I wanted to ask. I don't know if he could hear me because I wanted to ask him, does he believe that marriages should be a memorandum of understanding? Okay, Ikeen, there you go. You said marriages are not MOUs, which is a memorandum of understanding. Do you believe today, Ikeen, in 2024, between men and women in our current situation, our current economy, our current political uh, climate, Everything that we have going on in America today, on the Western world, I'm not talking about worldwide, just the Western world, that marriages should go in with some form of MOU? It is already. But you said it wasn't. No, I said marriage itself is not. But in the West, it's already now MOU, because that's why it's called common law. Common law is MOU. You, all right, so y'all do... do when you, you allow a woman to move into your house... Right, mm -hmm. or you move in the house, there is a handshake. That's MOU. I, I would advise y'all okay. not to move to a okay. common law. I, I, I misunderstood you. Okay, y'all can then continue moving on. I misunderstood my man, Shannon. I, I, if you're gonna, if y'all gonna do all that, I would advise you not to move to a common law state. Okay, first of all, the common law, yeah, state, but there's only so, like seven of them right now. Most of them, yeah, the, okay, so no, only like, one of them is like, Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of more women in Texas. <laughs> I would have that because in Texas, if, if you if Marcus did what he did in Texas, and like well did what what Kenya said in Texas, and he came in and said, "Oh yeah, this is my wife. We got married in Nigeria." He divorced her. He losing half his shit. Uh, but 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 uh, Sweeney, it's not. You don't really lose half of your shit. You oh, still you have to cut your shit. No, you both losing half of your shit. Not one person. No, you losing because, half of your shit here in Texas. No, no, because you bringing something. She's thing. bringing. No, you guys accumulating something in the marriage. So she's accumulating. You are accumulating. The church still has to calculate and it's see who is shit. Huh? It's still losing half your shit. Whether y'all accumulated it together or apart, you still losing half of it. You know what I'm telling you this because I have a friend that went through divorce. In Texas? Yes. And she's a nurse. He's an engineer. He makes more money than her. Fair. He calculated what she makes as a nurse and calculated what he, uh, he makes as an engineer. He had to then pay her certain amount of money for over 10 years to stop. Because that is the only way that the true half comes up. So you still have to pay balance because they're going to take her income into consideration and your income into consideration. But it all depends on case by case in Texas. Because guess what? Another of my friend again in Texas, not far from my house. In fact, we both live in Louisville. You live in Dallas, right? He actually went through divorce with his ex-wife. Right. Guess what? He got custody. And paid her a lump sum of hundred and fifty thousand. Bam! It ends everything. And and then she lost. She because you know why? The reason why he paid her money was because he wants the house. He doesn't want to give her the house, so he took the house. Why so I don't understand. If everybody's so afraid of of being their stuff being taken away. Not to mention that you got. I think in some states you got to be married over a duration. Of period of time before that's even valid to even 
for somebody to even ask for alimony, why don't y'all just get a premarital agreement? Because it doesn't protect from alimony. What? Prenups don't protect against alimony. Yes, they do. Yes, no, the hell they do. No, they don't. No, they do. Yes, they do. They do. No, if, they do. No, if you if you divorce somebody, alimony is not included in the prenuptial agreement. You're gonna pay that regardless. No. What yes. state is that? No. Yes. What state is that? Sweeney, what happened is that the court uses child support now to substitute alimony. Oh, yeah, child, child support is no, not no, child support is not stipulated. You can't no, stipulate a child support. Prenuptial agreement protects your previous assets. So if you come into a marriage with assets, no, you don't lose no, that. Bro. You need to look no, into premarital agreement. And I think yeah, there's a reason why a lot of guys are afraid. They don't really know what a premarital agreement can do. I I got I got a question for no, you. No, no. What, uh, this uh, we I'm sorry, I'm, divorces. Yeah. Do they do they calculate per person or is just divorces? Because like so. Uh, okay, it, here in Texas, a prenuptial can include a specific provision that can set or waive alimony, so long as the provision and the rest of the prenup are legal. The agreement is valid and can be enforced by the courts. Boom! Now you have your answer. There you go. It, technically, just, it, it, it technically, just told you. It just told you alimony is bullshit if you put it in the, in, in, in the premium. I just read that. <laughs> you got mixed up, what you got mixed up was child support. Yeah. The, across the nation, child support ain't got shit. Ain't got nothing you can't to protect. Do. You cannot protect child support in a prenup. You can't right. do that in no state. You That's can't agree your way out of that. taking care of Yeah, you child. can't agree your way out of child support. <laughs> See, the thing you got to understand well, well, some is, states prohibit, it, prohibit them outright, while others usually just omit that provision from the agreement. Yeah. but technically yeah. Florida, everybody Florida has a premarital agreement it's either it's either you're gonna use the court's premarital agreement yeah. or you're gonna use your own <laughs> you're you gonna make own. it home hey, a lot of them of us get thrown out though and and uh and you know so there's only what a few states and, and a lot of the states have a lot of stipulations when it comes to common law the thing about texas though let's talk, we since everybody keeps bringing up texas because that's always the one that people go first of all texas is one of the states that have a cap on child support it used to be 2000 i think right now it's 2500 that's the reason why chris brown living in california put himself on child support in texas with his daughter uh, with his first daughter because he knew that if he did that he would only have to maximum pay 2500 she tried to challenge it she tried to move the child support to california it didn't happen she lost chris anything above 2500 dollars a month is a gift to her that's another reason why Shawnee O'Neill moved her divorce to California and out of Florida. So Texas common law, there is no time limit. It's cold-blooded, Trev. And, or no, I'm sorry, Darwin. There's, it's cold-blooded in Texas. Two people could just come together and declare that they're married in Texas. And, and it's, it's and, it, it, and it's and it they now they now what they, there's a couple ways to do it. You could either def, you have to go into the court and file it and just say, hey. This is my wife. We ain't gonna get no paperwork. We ain't we ain't said no vows. Like just just me and my girlfriend, we married today. And then the court in Texas would be like, all right, cool. Now, if they don't file it and that they have a dispute over whatever the fuck they want to do, maybe property or they want to talk about something like that, they'll have to prove. Well, the person that's disputing it will have to prove in Texas court that they were that they did have a common law, and that's typically done through um bank statements did they have a shared bank account did they have you know typical things that's common of a marriage oh, and it's worse than that it's worse than that all they have mm. to do is find a spot where you claim them as they as your wife or husband or yeah if you checked off a box somewhere if you took a cruise and said i mean it's me and my wife you made a facebook go. post <laughs> <laughs> if you went on the record anywhere they can find it anywhere if you, if if you on record calling that woman your wife in Texas, y'all very now. All they need is two witnesses, two witnesses, two witnesses. Other, that's it. The How do you get a divorce with a common law marriage, though? But you, you 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 just declare you're divorced. That's the thing about it. But here, here's the thing. So just like you declare yourself married in a common law state, you declare yourself divorced in a common law state, especially if you guys get along and want to separate. But you get all the benefits of marriage in that state when you are considered when you're considering yourself common law marriage. Now, the thing about it is other states that like Utah and a few other ones, they require you to have uh, considered yourself common law marriage prior to a certain date. Some of them are like 1999 mm -hmm. and shit. 
after that, they threw it out, but they still recognize the people that claimed it back then. So we're talking about 20 year plus relationships. And then we also got to take this into consideration. It's 51 states. So do we do we argue or do we make a point for Texas when we got 49 other motherfuckers that don't even do rock like Texas does? I mean, Texas is his own country. A lot of people consider. So a lot of times in these discussions, let's not place our whole premise on one location just to get our point across when we got 38 other mother oh shit i'm sorry 42 other motherfuckers that or 44 other motherfuckers that don't even recognize that shit just remember that when we make these discussions yeah common law common law marriage ain't that i was just telling uh kenny or kenny you better not take your ass to them common law states and declare yourself married then you're gonna be fucked <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get to these super chats, man. So we go ahead and close out. AP accountability partner twenty dollars says first round on me. AP accountability partner five dollars says Darwin, you out of the panel practice, brother. They wearing your ass out. Uh, AP accountability partner two dollars says pause. AP again says brother Jay, I clip Marcus and put on a loop. And uh, AP again says Sweeney, how you gonna follow up <laughs> eloquence of what Marcus said with that ish? Marcus said what needed to be said, and you ruined it. Hey, P, I need you to get all the way up off that man tip, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say, man, it was an excellent, excellent show, man. Um, let's make sure we support each other, man. Check out everybody's Instagrams, uh, YouTube channels, any and everything they got going on. Let's make sure that we support one another uh, the same way that you support over here. Uh, Ikene, I want to thank you, brother, for coming up and sharing some of those wisdom and gems that you drop. And um, I want to thank everybody for watching, even the people that's not in the chat, uh, people that may be working. I'll make sure y'all be safe out there. Shout out to all my third shifters. Uh, I know what it's like, you and your life. And uh, hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Are right, y'all good? All right. Appreciate y'all. Hell up out of here. Yeah, man. Now go ahead and put them ribs, uh, Sweeney. Man, I want to do some ribs this weekend, man. I don't, I don't know though. Did Did you see what I dropped in the back? Yeah, I seen it. It say forty percent of marriages, new marriages, are with the person that's getting a second marriage. Yeah, appreciate you, fatty. All right, that All right. sounds crazy. Because if, that you, if you do those like ribs, make sure you save half of them for your spouse. <laughs> 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 All right, maybe we'll get up out of here. Later, later. yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you.